Diddy Gate never ends. So we got some updates on Diddy, Diddy Gate, everything around the Diddy verse right now. We also have some Bravo TV, uh, Vanderpump Rules things. Lots to talk about today on this Easter. Smash that like, subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get started. If you like what you see, come and get it with me. I know you deserve all you want. Cause your heart's made of gold. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Stand-up comedian and pop culture vulture, Jolene Lunzer here to talk all things pop culture news, things going on, our favorite television shows, all the stuff that we might not admit to others that we talk about. We take a comedic look at these things, or at least we try to. I am a very opinionated, biased lady, but you are welcome to have your opinions in the live chat or comment section after, and we can all just agree to disagree uh, and have a good time and realize that we're not against each other. We're just, we just have different opinions. That's my opinion! So smash that like if you haven't already. Hit that subscribe. We are really getting close to 40,000. I mean, we're closer to 37,000, but we're on our way to 40,000. And hello to everyone joining in the live chat. Hello, Jamie V. Shout out to my mods. Hit that like. Happy Easter. It is Easter. Yes. And hopefully none of you, like Susie Q was saying, are getting any yeasters for Easter. Nobody wants a yeaster for Easter, but hopefully you all are having a wonderful Sunday, whether you celebrate or you don't or whatever you're doing um, and taking care of yourself. Uh, and yeah. Okay. We're there. <laughs> if you want to support the channel further than liking or subscribing, you can always send a super chat while we're live. I'll highlight your comment. You can send a super thanks after the video post. Thank you to those of you who have done that. Or you can hit me up on the Venmo, PayPal, Cash App. Everything is on the bottom of the screen and also in the description, including my YouTube membership and my Patreon. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Newfoundland. Thank you, Felicia, joining us all the way from Newfoundland. I think I say it correctly. After watching a couple seasons of BB Can, Newfoundland, right? Not Newfoundland, 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 Newfoundland. All right. Uh, am I going to talk about BB25? I wish. <laughs> I wish. We don't know much about BB25 other than it's coming. It's happening. Um, but I don't have any updates. And we'll be covering it all summer. Okay. Are we on BB25 or BB24? What season are we on? Are we on BB26? What's happening? I totally forgot. I was out of the BB game. We already did BB25. Okay, Jolene, get with it. BB26 is coming, not BB25. We were already there. It feels like Groundhog Day. <laughs> I guess the only thing I could tell you, Drago, about BB25 is that uh, Sari and Jared met up with uh, Corey and the lady that lives in Nashville, the blonde lady. See, I already forgot all of their names and Izzy, and they were in Nashville, and they had a little brunch, and Sari says that Corey's now thick. He's a thick boy. That is uh, the, the newest news I know. Sari has been hanging out with her co-stars now, you know, her former co-stars for BB25, shout out to Sari Fields, and she told Corey he was thick, and he was like, I don't think I'm thick, and she was like, you're thick, and she said, I'm thick too. We're all thick, and Riley was like, not me. Hashtag not me. Corey and America are still together as far as I can tell from the social medias. And, um, oh, uh, Riley, that's the girl that's in Nashville. She seems to be hanging out with um, uh, the winner of BB25. I can't remember his <laughs> jag <laughs> quite a bit. And Bowie Jane might sometimes live in Todrick's house and Todrick is saying someone is living in his house and taking advantage of it, which I talked about on my other channel, Sipping Key with my friend Busy B, uh, Busy Blue, Busy B, you know, it's a day, it's a day, Busy Blue, shout out to Busy Blue, who is a Busy B and a handsome Busy B. Um, so me and Busy Blue talked about that and Todrick did a whole uh, somewhat grifty Instagram live where he was like, just because I have a $10,000 Cartier bracelet doesn't mean I don't need help to. Apparently his parents' home got lost in a fire 
And then he bought the house that all the big brother people party in, live in, squat in, the one that he was renting and he owed like back rent. Apparently he bought it to maybe prove a point to his critics and say, I can afford it. Now he's like, I can't because of the writer's strike and all these things. And he's moving to London. It was pretty confusing, but it was uh, him on Instagram Live basically asking people to get a cameo from him. And we all know how much work he puts into those cameos. He told us on Celebrity Big Brother a couple years ago that he just sends people the same thing. So, ugh. Ugh. yeah, I don't know. Apparently he's got a gig in London coming up. And a lot of people were speculating that who he was talking about, who he said someone was supposed to be living in his house that he can't afford and paying him rent. And he wants to maybe sell it. Uh, and this person had taken advantage of him. And everyone was like, is it Kylan? Is it Kylan? Is it Kylan from BB23? Because we know Kylan was there a lot. But some of my sources say it's not Kylan. So Todrick's just a mess as Todrick, did, Todrick is. I mean, if he really wanted to help his family, um, he said he wanted to do a GoFundMe for his family, but he was afraid he would get backlash. Yeah, yeah, he would. Because if you're living in, you know, a West Hollywood or somewhere in Hollywood mansion, why don't you just sell that, downsize a little bit, because clearly you can't afford it, and use some of that money and help your family out. I, I don't know. Very interesting. The Wizard of Oz House, Lucy. Yes, the Wizard of Oz House. So I guess there was a little bit of BB25, Big Brother news you guys remember everything i say is true except for the parts that are false and everything is for entertainment purposes only okay so let's start off with some uh vanderpump bravo news some tea some things that are happening and then we're going to go into some diddy updates uh and uh sound off in the chat and let me know all your thoughts hopes Dreams and opinions. Um, well, my sources say it's not Kylan, but my sources could be lying because they like Kylan. So I don't know. And it could be Bowie Jane because allegedly she was kind of staying there too. And some of you have been sending me Bowie Jane's DJing. She goes live on TikTok to DJ now to like 30 people, which is so on brand for Big Brother. Right after the season, everyone's watching and then... By the new year, unfortunately, a lot of them aren't able to keep up the hype. They're not able to keep up their relevance. And then no one's watching their lives anymore or supporting them. So she's just in a room. Could be at Kylan's, allegedly. And she's just like, hey, what's up, some teens? Baby Jane in the house. Wicka, wicka, wicka. DJ, baby Jane. So I don't know why she's doing that other than maybe it's fun for her. Maybe she's having a good time. And good on her. That would be very interesting, Lucy. Um, I still got to put a list together of my dream Traders season three cast. Okay, producer Tilly's already pissed. She's like, I'm out of here. I am done. I have worked enough today and that is all. All right, so let's talk about, first things first, Lala has went too far. Lala just, I, you know, Lala Kent, Vanderpump Rules, I want to cheer for Lala. I want to cheer for all the women. That's that's like what I want in my heart of hearts, in my soul. I want Lala to be better, but she's just not. Lala seems to be obsessed with now um, any chance she gets talking mess on both Ariana and Katie Maloney. Now, allegedly at the reunion, according to them, there was some kind of blow up between Lala and Ariana, which to me seems like such a waste of time when there are perfectly good problematic men there they could yell at, you know, but instead I guess they're going to yell at each other. I, I don't even know how this came about other than Lala is, uh, her favorite song is Hey Jealousy by the Gin Blossoms, allegedly. Okay. So Lala took to her podcast, Give Him Lala. And this is what she had to say. Just randomly, she's like, let's do a segment where I speculate, or actually where she reads the comments, allegedly. I mean, again, did people really comment this? Show us the comment. You can block off the name, but show us the comment. She said someone came into her podcast comments or email or something and was like, oh, hey, I looked up all of your cast members on Vanderpump Rules and uh, 
their engagement rate on their social media. So basically I can tell you who is buying followers or who has bought followers. So Lala's like, let's take this to give them Lala. And I'll just say, I don't know for sure if this is true. You know, she's pulling one of us bloggers uh, moves and she's going to start mess. But the difference is you're talking about your friends. I'm talking about people I don't know from television shows. You literally are shit talking your friends. And a lot of people think this was only to be able to call out Ariana and Katie as people who possibly might have bought followers on social media. Now, again, none of this has been proven. This is just Lala says some random troll, which is so interesting that Lala, who thinks Ariana should stop her whole day to clear up random troll allegations um, on Instagram for Sheena, is now reading the random troll comments when they are good for her and bad for her castmates. So let's take a listen to what Someone she has to say here, okay? okay. The podcast page. Uh-oh. Yes. And they said... So someone DM'd her podcast page. Uh-huh. Receipts. I, I, I mean, you're on Bravo. You can't just say these things, all right? We definitely need receipts, Heather Gay. Receipts, proof, timeline, screenshots, f***ing everything. Give us a receipt. Again, you can hide the name. Do you want to out anyone's name? All right, here we go. Don't know if you're interested in this, but I found this TikTok and it's through it's a Reddit thread on who has bought followers from Vanderpump Rules. Stop it. I swear. Okay, let's start by saying this. I don't know if it's fact. I'm just here reading the headlines, reading the comment section or whatever of the podcast <laughs> and reporting things that I find interesting even if they're not entirely true. <laughs> I cannot wait to hear this. Also, my heart is racing. Okay, again, again, Spell. again. Spell. It may not be 100%. Okay. All right, let's preface it with that. So I don't need any of my Vanderpump Rules cast members, uh, OG or now, to come for me, all right? Okay. Let's start with uh, the most followed VPR person, okay. OG. Stassi Schroeder, 3.3 million followers, uh, zero inactive. So inactive basically means they were purchased bots. That's why they're marked as inactive. This is what the DM is saying. That's why they're marked as inactive. I wouldn't know how to do this shit. If right. you paid me a billion dollars, I'd be like, I don't know what you're talking about. Inactive just means it's a bot. They're not real. So hers is zero. Music kills Kate, 1.63 million. Again, allegedly. It shows that her inactive following is 43.6 thousand. Okay. 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 Next is me. Okay. 2.36 million. Zero. Zero inactive bitches. <laughs> hey. I, I would know how to purchase a follower. And by the way, I've inquired. I'm like, yo, how do you get your following up like that? <laughs> bye, bye, bye. I have no shame. I'm just kidding. <laughs> But then you get the price. Oh, I, is it? Price? How much is well, it? I just know from like this person I used to be with. I was just used to gonna pay. say that. I'm like, you're spending. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Lala. Okay. So Lala, someone hopped in her DMs and they were like, hey, this, I looked up the cast. I'm, I don't have any, you know, I don't, she doesn't even tell us what site she looked at. That would have been helpful because then we could have went and fact checked. Okay. There's so many sites where you can get all different um answers all to to the to the same question she's asking about followers and activity and all this stuff so it doesn't prove anything but lala says i don't know about this stuff i would love to know about this stuff bish but then she tells us no no she does know about this stuff because randall used to buy followers the man she didn't love allegedly who she was with who she hates which rightfully so he has a very hateable nature um bless you and she that he did that and that she experienced she was firsthand witness so do you know about it or don't you lala you're speaking over here you're speaking over there it's getting tired it's it's just 
this isn't doing what I think you think it's going to do. Get you listeners for your podcast. You know, I think this podcast episode got, eight, Lala, it's got 8,000 views. I'm sure you get more audio stuff. <sighs> this wasn't the route, baby girl. This was not the route. It's been out two days, 8,000. I mean, that would be good for someone like me, but not for you on a big, huge television show. This is crazy, but it's because you do stuff like this. Talk over here, talk over there. I don't know anything about this buying followers stuff. I wouldn't even know the first thing. Then two minutes later, Randall used to buy him. So I do know. Well, what is it? It's, 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 it's unnecessary. This kind of stuff is just unnecessary. There are so many interesting things about you, Lala, and being a hater and a jealous hater isn't one of them. The journey with your daughter, the journey with your mom, your family, your brother, um, you owning now two homes, get it girl. But this isn't interesting being just a hater, a uh, unsupporter of the women who essentially helped you buy the home. Because without Ariana's trauma, uh, you wouldn't have sent it to Daryl. You know, you gained a lot of popularity when it seemed like you were standing up for um, what was going on and calling out the problematic baby boy behavior of the Toms. And now you're trying to be their best friend. Is it because you think they're not coming back next season? Katie and Ariana, like they don't need it, especially Ariana now that she just got the gig. Uh, hosting Love Island US. Is that why? So they're now just painting her as the villain and she won't be back? Is it because you need to cement your role on the show so that you could pay for these houses and that you need this show and you're mad that she doesn't need this show? Is it because you're just mad of the opportunity she has? I mean, what is it? Okay, let's keep listening because now, remember, she told us, I don't know nothing about this life. I don't know nothing about this. Buy your followers life. Lauren from Utah came with the finger G-U-N-S's. And now she's like, no, I do know. Because my former lover, my baby daddy, Rand, Pickleball Randall, who I made everybody like. I said, let him on the show. We had to listen to his crazy, crazy popcorn lung voice. We had to be introduced to Pickleball. We had to have the you know, old man, old man, take a look at my life. I'm a lot like Rand. You made people sign NDAs. Don't come for my man. Okay, let's keep listening. That much to get your following up each month? You're mm. crazy. crazy. I would never. And people, zero, zero inactive, bitches. <laughs> so Lala says she has zero inactive. And now she's going to mention Rand bought followers. Shocker, he bought you. Seemed like he was buying everything. Unfortunately, it was just with other people's money because he was a schemer. Scammer. Hey. I would know how to purchase a follower. And by the way, I've inquired. I'm like, yo, how do you get your following up like that? <laughs> bye, bye, bye. I have no shame. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but then you get the price. Oh, I, is it pricey? How much well, is I it? just know from like this person I used to be with. I was who just going to gonna pay. say that. I'm like, you're spending that much to get your following up each month? You're mm. crazy. crazy. I would never. And people can tell from your activity. Of well, course yeah, you can tell. I mean, you got a million followers and you're getting like... 30 comments? Yeah. yeah. What are you doing? Like, well, what's yeah. going on here? Okay, okay now remember, th these could have been purchased at any time, even before they were on Vanderpump. So like, um, the next is Ariana. At this point in time, she had 1.53 million. She now, I think, has 2 million. Okay. But her inactive is 707,000. Wow. Yep. Next, we have... T Schwartz, he's got 1.11 million. He has zero inactive. Schwartz. Schwartz. Tom Sandoval, Scandoval himself, the man who looks you dead in the eyes and tells lies. Guess what? <laughs> he's rolling in at 1.01 million and zero inactive. Woo! I was not expecting so that. So he may fuck the best friend, but he is not purchasing followers. <laughs> <laughs> That's where he draws the line. <laughs> Okay, so now not only is she calling Katie and Ariana out on having allegedly maybe bought their followers, but now she's also laughing at Tom Sandoval cheating with Ariana's best friend. How do you think it would go over if the shoe was on the other foot? Let's just think about it. If Ariana was on a podcast or Katie and made a joke about Randall cheating on Lala, and miss me with this. It's different. She has a baby. 
no, you're supposed to be friends and it hurts either way. And it is very sad when there's a baby included, but how do you think she would respond if Ariana was just like, <laughs> I guess Randall is, you know, he didn't only buy his followers, he bought Lala, right? Mm. Oh my God, she would be going nuts. This just, to me, it's just, it, it's ridiculous at this point. It's so, it, it, it just, it screams, jealousy it screams you need you know this money or whatever you think you're going to get because she's probably at a point like i said where she's like you know what ariana's not going to be back on the show so i don't give a fuck about ariana i gotta get back in with these dudes i gotta get in good with the producers right now andy cohen's saying that this is my best season ever so hopefully there will be a 12th season of vanderpump rules or they're throwing me on the valley oh my gosh and they're all laughing like ha 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 and it's not like a joke about Tom. It's a joke directly to hurt Ariana. I mean, it's it's more of like a, a she's, she's almost complimenting Tom Sandoval and going, well, you might be a liar here, but you're not a liar there. And you have real followers. Oh, my gosh. Elizabeth says she's begging for the valley. She's begging for it. Yes, DM, thank you for the first super chat of the live. DM says Lala's head has gotten too big. She thinks she's something that she's not. Yeah. Yep. You got to be humble. You got to get humble, Lala. This is just like, it's just gross. And it seems very desperado. Let's keep listening, unfortunately. I was not expecting that. I thought he was going to be the most inactive. No, how oh. wild is that? What? Uh, James Kennedy, 918,000 followers, and his inactive following is 17.1 thousand. Okay. Ali Luber, we have 114K for her followers and inactive. So when I read the first one, it says real followers and then inactive followers. Mm -hmm. 66.5 thousand inactive followers. Okay. Kristen Doty, 707. Okay, did did you hear that, Allie? Be careful. Be careful. Rachel found out the hard way. You know, Rachel, dirty deeds. She did Ariana so dirty. But Lala also, you know, she don't care. You're not her friend. She might get, there might be a lonely night. And her and James are like, come on, be my baby tonight where they're making music. Just be careful because she wanted to make sure she pointed you out too, Allie. And what have you done to her? Nothing. Been nothing but nice. What's the point? What's the point? of trying to drag your friends about their social media following. It just, it comes off as though you're very insecure about it. I wouldn't drag my friends about that. This is something you do if you're me and I don't know you people. <laughs> like This isn't what you do if it's your actual freaking friend. Mm -mm, now she's going to speak about Kristen Doty. We'll see. 1,000 followers, 252,000 inactive. This game is fun. It's 11-11, like guys, but anyway, keep going. Okay. Um, Lisa Vanderpump, 2.7 million. I guess we didn't find out about Lala. <laughs> Real followers. I think she's now in the threes. Mm -hmm. um, but her inactive following at this time was 477,000. Yeah, I'm sure. Lisa Vanderpump. Love Lisa Vanderpump or not. No. I, no. This, again... This is stupid. <laughs> this is so dumb, Lala. You're just trying to cause problems. There's no way Lisa Vanderpump, if this is what it the how how it's measured, that Lisa Vanderpump has bought all these. She doesn't need to. People follow her. Whether you like Lisa or not, Lisa has put in her time on reality TV in the restaurant business world. She's going to have followers. You, ma'am, have only shown us to be affiliated for quite some time with quite the scammer being Randall. Okay. No offense, all offense, but it, the likelihood of him teaching you a couple things or hiring a social media person to buy followers for you is a lot greater than Lisa freaking Vanderpumps. Sheena Shea, 1.72 million. Her inactive is 48.2 K. Let's also state, I don't know if this is true or not, do you think when you hire, if you're, if you hire a social media team, yeah. do you think they might be like, 
we're going to purchase them some followers with that. I think if your team is advising you to do that, and you're they don't know enough it. about, well, I would think if my team advised me to do that, yeah. just because I know I've seen where Instagram goes through and clears out the bots. Yeah. Like, I don't know why you're. How have you seen that? If you don't have bots and all your followers, according to this random person who messaged your podcast are real, how would you see that? Do you see it through Rand? Cause you told us you don't know nothing about this. You wouldn't know the first thing, even if they paid you, but Randall did pay you. And you, you, you did then admit that you saw. I, I, okay. Okay. Team okay. I advise you because right. your following has nothing to do with your engagement, right? Mm -hmm. Like if, if a brand comes in and wants to pay you money to promote their product, they don't give a shit about how many followers you have. They no. care about the engagement that you have. Like my mama's engagement Oh, it's probably like 98 percent. it's yeah. wild she and now you're just opening up the door for people to go check your mom's engagement <laughs> like for real big shout out to your mom she seems wonderful but now you're opening that door so for someone who says she doesn't know a lot about this engagement game or buying followers you sure you sure are telling us you know quite a bit thank you evelyn for the super chat uh evelyn says lala talks about becoming softer yeah i always forget about that part I guess that means being less aggressive in person and more passive aggression behind people's back. Yeah, maybe that's it. Like I said on Ryan Bailey's uh, show when we collabed and we had the best time, uh, Lala doesn't know who she is. And this is coming off very evident. The She wants to give all the advice and tell people how to, how to live their life. But every other day, she is changing her opinions. She's changing her like stances on life. <laughs> She's saying, I want to be softer all the while doing shit like this, which like Evelyn is saying, it just comes off as, you know, more passive aggressive and, uh, you know, and then throwing Katie under the bus to be like, I don't want to be like Katie. I want to be like less aggressive. Okay. Love Katie or hate Katie. Katie's Katie. She is an authenticity that you're lacking because you're still trying to find out who you are, which is fine. But just say that. Just say that. Own it, Lisa Rinna, because it, it's pretty clear, Lala, that you are still very, very lost. Very lost. Okay. She gets just a couple thousand shy of her entire following viewing her page. That is fantastic. Yeah, they look at insights. I will say the following will bring, will will pique their interest. Eyes. Yes, but they always, always ask, can you send insights. me her engagement? Yes. yes. Okay, Jax Taylor. We have um, we have him around a million followers, right? Mm -hmm. He has inactive 953K. Whoa. Again, allegedly. <laughs> I don't even know if this is... So she's like kind of claiming, if that's the case, that out of his like million followers, he has almost as many... So she's basically saying they all could be bought. Oh my goodness. I feel it's just interesting someone sent it to the page. Yeah. And I have to like... It knows that I didn't purchase any followers. It knows yeah. that Stassi didn't, right? Yeah. Um, Brittany has, I think, around a million point five. The ones that are, there are some where it's like they, they're saying give or take on the actual real following. Mm -hmm. Which is weird. It's not doing it with the cast that's here now. 937 inactive. 937,000. 937,000 inactive. Wow. So I thought that was interesting. I mean, the Britney one might be true. No, all the Jenny Craig people follow Britney. But here's all that this is saying is that you, anybody, any of us out here can message Lala some random things that we say we found to be true and she will share misinformation with the world. I feel like this should have the little uh, thing that pops up on Twitter or does it pop up on Twitter where th this could be misinformation. Because it's pretty clear, you didn't look into this at all. You're just taking what someone, some random person, or as you like to say, she told some or random people in Iowa know before I know. You took random people on the internet who can send and say anything. You took their word for it. <laughs> and you're passing this off as fact. So go message Lala, anything you want, all the fake news you want. <laughs> And she'll go live on her podcast and make it a whole segment on an episode. Oh my God. Blue Bevy says, I'm a Virgo like Lala, but serious, interested in what's in her chart because I can't imagine. I would love, oh, you know what? 
we does anyone know if anyone knows um i wonder what if, if lala has shared well we could ask ally but my friend sarah is uh, her mom, Mama Bev and her are very good at charts and they've done my chart before. Uh, and I wonder if we have the time uh, of Lala's birth and the location, which I assume would be Utah. We just need a time, I think. And then we can get a birth chart because something is going on here. Something's going on here. Okay. So obviously after she says all this stuff, the internet is going to have an opinion. Now, shout out to this wonderful um, Twitter account, uh, Bywig Hello Drama at No Smoke uh, No More. Uh, they're the ones who I saw this posted because I didn't listen to Lala's um, episode to find this. I found this on Twitter and they had clipped the video of it. So shout out to them. Go show them lots of love. Um, this account says uh, Lala Kent was sent a TikTok that revealed which VPR cast members bought Instagram followers, and she went through it on her podcast. Of course, it said Lala has zero inactive followers. She wouldn't have brought this up if it said that she had a large amount of fake followers. I feel like she just wanted to put it out there that some of the cast, specifically Katie and Ariana, because she hates them right now, might have bought followers. And then other people had things to say. Lisa, shout out to at Lisa D'Angelo 45 says, Lala's trying way too hard to go after Ariana and Katie. She needs to sit down and shut up for a while. She has a little girl. She should watch how she treats other women. Mm. Megan Beck at Maggie BATC says, uh, does it talk about the rate that her castmates are losing followers? That's a competition. I'm sure she's winning. <laughs> I mean, no offense, all offense, but uh, yeah. I, I mean, I know that, again, I want to root for Lala. I I want her to wake up from whatever's happening, this 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 jealousy cloud or this need for whatever she thinks she's doing. Um, but I don't, this is not going to go well for her because when you kind of market yourself, your brand is authenticity. I tell it like it is, I'm this, that, boom, boom, Lauren from Utah, but yet you're talking out of all sides in your mouth and you're not standing by anything you say. And there's rules for me uh, different than rules for thee. People are going to catch on to that. And then no one's going to want to watch that shit. No one's going to want to follow someone like that. You know? Oh my goodness. Okay. Uh, this person, so then we had some people coming through being like, hey, let me tell you how this shit works. And I am no expert on the social media, what these things mean, fake followers, whatever followers, dead followers, because people die on social media. People, I have multiple social media accounts. You can follow me at Jolene Lunzer at No Offense, All Offense. Um, I have a uh, pumpkin Spice Nightmare Girl, which is where I put Halloween stuff when I remember. I have a Bedford Falls Babe Instagram where I want to post Christmas stuff. So I'm not always active on all of these because it's a lot. Uh, and there's a lot of people that might have forgotten their password. So even the 0% doesn't make sense to me because there it, it's it would seem statistically impossible that you would have a following where no one is inactive or no accounts are dead. Okay. So Quantum Dream Queen, this looks like it comes from Reddit. Shout out to them. They said Tom times two, Rachel and Stassi bought followers. So both Toms, Rachel and Stassi bought followers. That's why they have no inactive accounts following them. Having inactive accounts is organic. Not all of your followers will use Insta regularly, nor will they interact with your content. That is the damn truth. Because I know on my personal at Jolene Lunzer, I think I have almost 6,000. Thank you, guys. We're very close to 6,000 followers, which is exciting. And I think on my no offense, all offense, I have 9,000 some. Okay. However, my engagement, I don't think it's particularly great on either of them because I'm not as active as I am let's say like on YouTube, where my YouTube engagement is much better than on Instagram. I would like to get better on Instagram, but that takes me having, you know, post regularly, all these things. And, and I don't know if my stuff's popping, not popping up or whatever. So, um, this does make sense that not everyone who follows you is going to interact. Now, it is true, I think what Lala's brother was saying, where it's always sus when you see these accounts that have like 2 million followers and then 30 comments. If their comments aren't restricted, you're like, you would have, if you have 2 million followers, you're going to have more than 30 comments. I mean, that's just ridiculous. So that's when it's like really blatant that people are buying, um, you know, uh, followers, things like that. They should probably buy the comments too. 
So um, not all your followers uh, will use Instagram regularly, nor will they interact with your content. Allie has the best metrics because she has one-tenth of the followers of Sandoval, but the same amount of average likes and high engagement. Very interesting. You can also pay for services to remove your ghost followers. Having zero is definitely a sign of manipulation. You hear that, Lala? People are contradicting what you say, and they said actually having zero is a sign of manipulation. So that means that 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 would indicate that all you, you know, all your cast, you and your castmates who have the zero percent of alleged fake followers, that that actually is an indication that you have purchased something along the way. In the old Instagram times, this person is saying you could buy followers and that's all the accounts would do. But now most credible uh, services include engagement because we all know, just like Lala was talking about, it's very important. Engagement is really what brands and when they want to work with you, that's what they look at. They don't care if you have 2.4 million followers, but you only got like you know, a small percentage of that that actually engage with you, you're most likely not going to be viable to them, I would assume, because you aren't, um, you know, you don't have what they're trying to do is they're trying to reach your audience. But if your audience isn't even reaching out for you, why would why would they even want part of that? So then someone in the comment section posted this. And they're like, actually, Lala, here's what I found on a different site about your engagement, 2.4 million followers. She's only following 223 people, 310 posts, and she has an engagement rate of 7.08%. I don't know if that's good. Average likes are 166,000.6. Her average comments are 3.5,000, but she has 22.9 allegedly suspicious followers, which could mean bots, fake accounts, bought and paid for, and you only have 77% real followers. And I would say that's probably true for a lot of people. Even if you don't buy followers, um, you're probably going to have some suspicious accounts because I'll get randomly like weird accounts follow me and I'm like, how would this person find me? And they post nothing. They have nothing. So I don't, I don't know what that's about, but it just like, you're opening up the door, Lala, for people to then look into your followers. And just because one person says you have zero, that doesn't mean it's a good thing. And that doesn't mean it's true. So the fact that she would just put this information out there and it'll just be run hoping what I'm hope what I'm thinking, she's hoping it'll be run like a headline, you know, to prove that like, look at Katie and Ariana, they're not real. I'm real. Even Tom Sandoval's real. Look at even Allie's not real. So if she's going to be your next sweetheart, because listen, if Ariana and Katie, now, especially Ariana, let's say she's not coming back next season, because I at this point will almost guarantee Ariana ain't going to come back. I mean, maybe if the show even comes back itself. Okay. Um, so let's say Ariana doesn't come back. Everyone else comes back. Allie has been a favorite. Fans are really responding to Allie, this energy she's bringing to the show. You don't think Lala's going to come for her? That'll be the next one she's coming after. Eventually, she will do that. Maybe sooner than later. Because that's what we've seen with Lala. You know, she was really good friends with Katie. And now she's like, Katie only wanted to be friends with me when I was dealing with drama. And now that I'm doing better and I'm so soft, she doesn't want to deal with me. Is that the case? Or is it that she's calling out your bullshit and she's actually standing by Ariana? Whether they're, they're besties in real life or not, Katie was also, you know, a victim of the Toms and the Tom smear campaign against her for years and mistreatment. And now you're out there like you're going to go befriend the Toms. It's just gross. Colleen, thank you so much for becoming a member to my channel. I appreciate that. Oh, let's see what you guys are saying. Layla says, yes. Like the CIA guy said, bots are actually unusually active. Mm. Way more than most normal people on social media. Mm-hmm. Huh. Lucinda said, I would never trust Lala. Susie says, I bet Ariana hired a social media team early in her career and they bought followers. Back then, they didn't show engagement or stats. That could be true, too. And that's what someone mentions. I think her producer, Lala's producer on the podcast says, could that have happened? 
And Lala's like, yeah, yeah. But anyways, back to that. They're probably scammers. <laughs> Layla says zero inactive accounts is fishy. Zero percent of anything is usually suspect, right? Right. Thank you, Nancy. Just followed. No offense, all offense. It used to be married to Bravo. So I did have a mass on following because people were like, why did this bitch change the name? <laughs> And it's because I don't have the Married to Bravo podcast anymore. Married to Bravo has evolved into No Offense, All Offense, where we're pop culture vultures and we talk about that stuff. Um, and it's not just Bravo. So, right? That person nailed it. Like, you are going to be just pwned in the comment section when you do things and say things like this. And you just take the information as, like, anyone can send it to you. And you're out there with the platform Lala has roasting up your friends about this shit like it is just it's not good it's not good thank you Yvonne happy Easter uh Valerie says how is it Allie is more mature than all of them um I, honestly they've probably all been tainted by too many years of reality television so it's probably caused arrested development stunted them emotionally something like that <laughs> I don't know I don't know um now what would be great is if Lala would maybe just, if she is going to enter this villain era, um, if she could just accept and be honest that she's in her villain era. It would also be great if the Toms would do that, but they think they're heroes still, you know? And I think she would be better, there would be a better reception for Lala, but she needs to figure out what she's doing, what she's doing on these damn shows. Because one minute you're like, yes, Lala, tell him, do it, girl. And the next minute, you're like, huh? She is 100% more wishy-washy than Sheena. Sheena is, you know, Sheena is seemingly watching the season. She can be kind of snaky too. But I think Sheena's has more to do with what's going on in her life. And also this want for people to like her, mainly Lisa Vanderpump. So maybe Sheena wasn't going to go down this route with Tom Sandoval. Maybe she was because there are seasons where Sheena picks the boys over the girls and this stuff with Max. I wasn't even thinking about this, but I remember when, you know, we know from last episode that Katie allegedly hooked up with Max, right? I thought Sheena had Katie's location. So Sheena admitted in last episode that she has 56 people's location on her phone. 56 people gave you the location? Okay. Um, so I thought she was checking Katie's. She was checking Max's. And if you remember when Max was on the show, remember Sheena was like trying to hook it up with that trainer dude who kind of looked like Max, who was like a YouTuber, and then also Max. And then Max was into Dana. And then Sheena was mad at Dana for that reason. And it was just a mess. And it was one of Sheena's worst seasons ever because she just, she looked ridiculous and petty trying to go after these like these new cast members who were younger and, but I'm like, Oh, so is she mad about the max thing? And okay. Then we got to talk about Brock. All right. So, Oh goodness. So now since all this happened with, um, Brock calling out Katie Maloney, a single woman who was in a marriage with Schwartz, the, it wasn't good. They should have never got married in the first place. They did. They thought they loved each other. But Schwartz uh, admittedly was a kissing bandit. He was a cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. You know, they did not have a good relationship. And then Katie, after they break, right when they break up, she says, please, just let's keep it out of the friend group, especially like our fellow castmates. And Schwartz decided, no, I'm going to still pretend to be hooking up with Rachel, kiss Rachel, even though I know my friend Tom Sandoval is hooking up with her and um, having this affair. But I like the way it stings, Katie. That's all, that's all I can imagine from Schwartz, because otherwise, why would you do that to someone you once loved and respected? Why would you hurt her like that and push that in her face, knowing that it's not that you did that, but it's also a lie because she's really hooking up with Sandoval, but you're kind of hooking up with her in that you're making out with her and you're both plotting uh, the downfall of Katie and Ariana. It's just really, really very, very dirty. Okay. So Katie is now single. She's been single for a while. Schwartz has never respected any of her wishes post-marriage or even in marriage. You know, you take a vow to, uh, to, you know, honor 
and obey. Well, obey. That's a little weird. But you, you, you take a vow, basically. Don't put your tongue or your wiener in anybody else. Okay? Unless you have an agreement where, you know, you swing or you get a hall pass or something, which they didn't have. So um, Katie, you know, she, we never heard about her cheating. We heard about Schwartz cheating. So now Katie's out of the relationship. She, he's never expected or respected any of her wishes or was faithful to her in the relationship or even as they were breaking up. So she sleeps with Max. Oh, well, thank you, David. I appreciate that. Thank you for the super chat and happy Easter to you too. And Max, like Christina said, he's a jerk. He's an asshole. We saw him on this episode of the Valley. He was peeping around in the back. When Max was on Vanderpump, I was like, oh, girls. But you know what? Katie wanted a little. She got a little. And then Brock decides he's going to be the one to go and out Katie. How rude that is. First of all, it's not rude to Katie. Maybe it's rude to Max if he is, in fact, one of Schwartz's best friends. Then it'd be rude to him. Call his ass out. But not Katie. So now Brock's getting called out. It's like glass houses, Brock. We all try our best to give Brock a chance on this show, even though... We've heard a lot, Brock. I think we all heard a lot, whether it be your kids that are in Australia with your ex-wife. I think it was an ex-wife, right? Um, who, you know, whether it be when you first joined the cast and, you know, you were trying to catch up on all these back child support payments that I don't know, maybe, hopefully you caught up on. But again, you are still in another country than your kids. Okay. Catch up on your stuff. Okay. We're, we, you know. A lot of us fans just let you, we didn't want to be too judgmental and go, okay, maybe he'll figure it out. All right. Um, and then don't even get me started on the alleged domestic violence in the past within that. Um, so there, there's lots of things. There's lots of things. So this, so the last thing Katie Maloney needs is judgment from you. You have too many skeletons, sir. Whether you've corrected it, changed, I hope you have. God bless. I've met you in person. You seem like a very nice person. But you can't erase that stuff. So you going around trying to shame a single lady for having sex with someone in front of the... It, it looks bad. It looks bad. Yeah. No, I don't want no scrub. Do, 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 do. Total, Nancy. Total jerk for doing that. So now the internet is picking up on... Just how ridiculous, ridiculous, uh, ridiculous this is that Brock would be even having an opinion about this. People are like, I'm sorry, Brock, what does this have to do with you? You barely know Schwartz. Okay. And you have your own sordid history. So what, whoever Katie's banging, that's her business. And if Sheena wants to talk to her about it, then I guess Sheena can but nobody needs to hear it from you. So now all these things from Brock's past are being brought up because he's choosing to shame a woman. And that just shows that this season is so gross and just littered in misogyny and er internalized you know, misogyny from the women and jealousy because a man with a past like Brock's, okay, with all these allegations and things, we're going to let that be the storyline. We're going to you're not going to immediately everyone stand up and go, whoa, 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 whoa. What the hell are you saying? Don't talk to Katie like that. Don't do that. Don't do it like that. What are you doing? What does that matter? What do you care? You Did you even know them? Then did you even, do you barely know Max? Like, what are you talking about? Figure out your stuff down under, down under Brock. You gotta, ugh. it's just so, to me, it is so, so gross. Um, so then now, so Brock just opened up like a, he, he opened up just a Pandora's box of things that could uh, come back at him, come back at Sheena. It just, it's not smart. It's not smart to do it. It's gross. Um, considering, I mean, the only person I think who's, I, I remember Lala calling him out on the show about, and being worried about these, you know, allegations, um, about his ex and his former relationship and the uh, custody and the child support with the kids. Uh, and now they're fine. And now they're the best of friends. So God bless. But um, I do remember Lala having quite an opinion on that. And Sheena didn't like that. 
And I think they should know that anytime Brock inserts himself in a woman's sex life that he has no business inserting himself in, these things will come back to haunt him. And that is exactly uh, what we're seeing in the media and from fans. Fans are like, whoa, 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 whoa. This is none of your business. This is none of your, none of your business. Not at all. So, yeah, let's see what you guys are saying. Uh, Yvonne says, Brock has no storyline. Brock and Sheena, the thirsty couple. Uh, Via Coin says, Sheena and Lala have fumbled the bag. They really have. They were doing well. Yes, changing their personalities only to revert uh, back to being usual selves 2.0. Mm -hmm. Brock opened up a male panty shop. Did he really? <laughs> Oh my gosh, no, 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 no. Mm. Yep, open the doors, opens you up, Brock. Karma is coming. So now there are all these allegations and blind items hitting Dumois that Brock, now this is, again, no proof of this other than if you follow D Dumois and you follow, uh, you know, their blind items. Now people are like, oh yeah, well, Brock has been getting DMs from influencers, like Australian women influencers. He's been, or no, he's been in the DMs of these Australian, allegedly. This isn't what you need, Brock. Because now people are going to, you know, start talking about this. There's going to be lots of speculations and it's definitely not what Sheena needs with her current, um, you know, state dealing with, um, uh, OCD and, and all of that. Oh my God. Okay. So let's pull up what, um, so Brock is saying that this is another hit piece from Ra He's bringing Rachel Raquel back in the game. Brock's like, and me, me, not me, me. It's not, I'm not in the, the I, what I'm not in the DMS. Me. Nee, nee, nee. It's definitely uh, Rachel Raquel. She's trying to make Sheen upset. And it's her PR person. That's who's doing it. It's not me. It's not me. So Brock is out here <laughs> again. She He just pulled freaking Rachel Raquel back in. Not like she's far out because she's, you know, she's still um, in the realm uh, of Vanderpump rules and talking about this stuff. But uh, let me see if I can find it here. So he, He's saying, nee, 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 not me, not Brock, not Brock, Mr. Orgy. Nee, I wouldn't do that. Nee, I'm a good guy. So uh, shout out to Breaking the Rules Pod. Apparently Brock, seeing these stories, he comments and then deletes, calling Rachel's PR rep, who Tom Sandy but also blamed, because if these dudes can blame a woman for something, they will. Uh, remember uh, Tom Sandoval blamed... Uh, Rachel Raquel's PR woman uh, for why she broke up with him. No, I think it was just because she realized that you were just an old creepy dude who wasn't in support of her getting better and you just cared about yourself. <laughs> Maybe she just woke up to that and that she was going to get treated the exact way that you treated Ariana. I don't know. That's... Maybe, maybe, maybe some of that little therapy or spa therapy worked. Okay, so Brock comments, then deletes, calling Rachel's PR rep, Juliet. I'll see you next Tuesday and not the fun James Kennedy one at Sir on our post. So it was on the Breaking Rules pod post. So they post about these rumblings that are happening. And Brock Davies says, damn, I would have thought by now, Rachel, he's like, damn, I would have thought by now, Rachel. Uh, would have gotten a better PR, but apparently her PR just wants to leverage her working relationship for what clout? Don't ever come for Ariana in the situation, you callous CNX Tuesday. What? <laughs> so maybe. So in addition to this, in addition to these, um, you know, <laughs> these allegations that are out there. And Rachel Raquel continuing to drop things about Ariana and things. Now Brock wants to stick up for Ariana because he's like, well, I think they're also coming after me and Sheena. They're trying to put stuff to me and Sheena because that's what he had claimed before. That this whole Brock is cheating thing that came out right after Scandival was a direct um, result of Sandoval 
Sandoval's PR and Rachel Raquel's PR. Oh my God. Yeah. And, and people are like payroll husband clocking in. Cause again, we also then are opened up Brock. When you do these sort of things, we're open up to the fact of why did Tom Sandoval have to pay your, your, you and your ladies bills? Why do you have to send you guys money? Where were you? What were you doing? What was happening? I know it was a panic and lots of people struggling, but I, huh? You guys have both been on TV. You've been on, on the TV shows. So, uh, um, Anna, uh, Anna said that a PR person was throwing out some wild accusations against Ariana, basically blamed her for not going into Tom's phone and figuring it out sooner. Mess. Such a mess. That's crazy. We know that Rachel Raquel... I mean, the stuff that's coming out on her podcast and the stuff she continues, sometimes we're like, oh, okay. And the other times we're like, mm, she still don't, she, she still doesn't get it. Because I do believe there is a big part of Rachel Raquel that really just wants to hurt Ariana and Katie still. She just really, she really wants to get Ariana, which is a big reason I think she has this whole lawsuit, this revenge P lawsuit and included Ariana in it of all people, which is just ridiculous. So, but uh, like HC saying, Sheena's stalker behavior made me double check all my location tracking settings. It it's a little weird, and I and I don't think it's probably healthy for Sheena given her you know admission to OCD, um, and those tendencies and and going through what she's going through, you know, postpartum, um, that she should be checking all these people when she's lying in bed next to her husband or wherever. I, I just I could care less. Who, or I couldn't care less, I should say, who's where people are. If you're not my two dogs, my cat, or my husband, or Nana, you know, I mean, I, I, my niece and nephew, that's it. That's all. I Otherwise, everyone do whatever you want. I don't even check Nana's location. <laughs> I don't think Nana would want me to. And 56 locations is sus. It's very sus. That's That's cuckoo to me. Okay, now it's not getting any better for Sheena. So in addition to Brock stepping up and, you know, having an opinion about Katie Maloney's sex life, which is none of your business, Brock, none, zero, zip, zilch, nada. How many fucks should you give? Zero, zip, zilch, nada. All right? You, you shouldn't care. You don't worry about that. You worry about what's going on in your uh, world. Now we also have... John Mayer has come out. Now, Sheena has admitted. She said, have I had an orgy? I've had an orgy before, and it was with an A-list celebrity. Let's just say one time my body was a wonderland. And John Mayer said that that didn't happen. Okay. Now, John Mayer is <laughs> doesn't seem like a great guy anyways. Um, I If I ever slept with him, which allegedly I didn't because I wouldn't. Because um, <laughs> believe me, he was knocking down my door. No, he wasn't. But I'm sure. If he knew about me, he okay. John Mayer, though, since Sheena has come out saying she had this orgy with him and possibly was like dating, um, he has come out and said uh, that he's annoyed. OK, so page six and other outlets are reporting that John Mayer tells pals he never hooked up with Sheena Shea despite her hints. John Mayer is annoyed that Sheena Shea keeps hinting that they once hooked up. According to a new report, a source told the U.S. Sun uh, that the singer has never been involved with the reality star, despite her not so cryptic comments during a recent episode of Vanderpump Rules. John has told several people close to him that he never hooked up with Sheena and Insider told the outlet earlier this week. <laughs> Do you think he was calling up Andy Cohen like, Andy, get her off the, what is she doing? No, Andy, this was so long ago. I was on so many hallucinogenics. I don't even remember, okay? Everyone's body was a wonderland. Remember, I was a I was a whore. You know, John Mayer is notoriously. If we're gonna slut shame women, let's slut shame John Mayer because he was a whore and he was talking about it. He was like Jessica Simpson's sexual napalm and Jennifer Aniston and this person and that person, and he just wouldn't shut up about all these people he was lucky enough to have sex with. And we're like, shut up, John Mayer. We don't care. Go make a crybaby song. We're not worried about this. So he's annoyed. Um, he knows that he has been telling people they hooked up or he knows that she has been telling people they hooked up well before the Vanderpump Rules episode aired. So he's like, I know that Sheena, this isn't her first time. Okay. This ain't her first rodeo. 
And it's gotten back to him that she's been talking about this even before then. Okay. Hmm. Uh, he's very annoyed by the entire thing and wants nothing to do with Sheena. Oh, Sheena. Oh, Sheena. The source also alleged that the gravity hit maker, 46, did his best to avoid Sheena, 38, when they attended the same party recently. Oh, my God. She was trying her best to talk to John, according to page six, and even go as far as to take a picture with him. But he shot her down, the insider alleged. Page six reached out to reps for mayor for comment. Shay hinted earlier this month that she was once in an orangey with the Grammy winner during the game of Never Have I Ever with castmates. And Brock also, he admitted he was, I was in orangey tea. It was me and he was tea, another dude. And two ladies, yes. So there was two dicks and two vaginas, yes, yes. So that's not gay. And we're like, Brock, we don't care. Uh, we we really don't care, you know. We might, we'd probably even like you more if you were gay, you know. No offense, all offense, but uh, nothing wrong. Nothing wrong with that, sir. As long as it's consensual, we love it. Shay hinted earlier this month, she's in the orangey, never have I ever. It was an A-list celebrity. I'll be honest. Uh, no offense, all offense, apologies to the John Mayer fans, but I don't know if I'd put him A-list anymore. I don't know if he was ever A-list. Maybe if the A stands for asshole, okay? Um, she claimed to have met Mayer when he was dating Jennifer Aniston. So Sheena, interviews, old interviews have been resurfaced with like the the website Young Hollywood. And it was Sheena being like, yeah, I was the, I think she was like a server or something when she met and Jennifer was so nice. And then after they broke up, then he reached out to me or I reached out to him or someone reached out to someone. And then we orgied. We're like, what? Though she didn't name the celeb in question, she quipped once upon a time of money was a wonderland in what appeared to be a reference to the most recognizable song. The Bravo Leverty also spoke about her alleged past with mayor during a 2020 episode of the flashbacks podcast. She said, I'm working this party. I end up getting wasted with them. She explained, referencing the first time she met the singer and then girlfriend Jennifer Aniston, whom he dated from 2008 to 2009. So for like a second. Every time they did a shot, they would get me a shot. Oh, God. Put it in a book or something. After he split with the Friends actress, the sir server claimed she began seeing Mayer. I was living with the Hills alum, Stacey Adams. Oh, God, I remember. Do you guys remember when Sheena popped up in the Hills? And this is before we knew who Sheena really was. But that Stacey character that came in that was supposed to be uh, eyeing Spencer and they were partying. Oh, God, that was a mess. Uh, Sheena was there like, yeah, let's go party. And they were all like at a bar, a restaurant. And it was once... We were pretty sure before we didn't know the hills was fake. <laughs> you know, we were like, no, it's for real. <laughs> you know, who wears combat, combat boots to the beach, right, Justin Bobby? But by that time, I think that was once Lauren Conrad was gone. Once Elsie was gone, then the Stacy rolled in and she was just like this hot bartender at a dive bar that Spencer went to to complain about Heidi. And then Sheena was one of the friends that they were partying with. If you guys remember the hills like I do all too well. So she was living with Stacey Adams at the time. Uh, this went on for about six months. It just became, you know, kind of the three of us. We had a little thruple going on. So she, I didn't know this part. She's claiming that the Hills alum, Stacey Adams and her and John Mayer had a thruple going on. Is that where Rachel got the idea to thruple with Ariana and Tom? Oh my God. Well, Mayer is still single. The Good as Gold songstress found love with husband Brock, married in 2021. They have a beautiful daughter, Summer Moon. Oh, Sheener. Oh, Sheener. <laughs> Tracy says, yeah, A list, STD list. Okay. I don't know if I would put uh, John Mayer as in an A list. Okay. So again, the son. No such thing. John Mayer denies hookup with VPR's Sheena Shea and wants nothing to do with her. Oh, Sheena. I mean, this is just, first of all, the first, and this is bad. This is the first time he hasn't wanted to brag about a hookup and hasn't wanted to exploit his, um, his little liaisons. 
Oh, Sheena. So then Sheena, um, I think I have it on my Twitter here. Then Sheena starts posting receipts to like say, oh, no, 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 no. My body was a wonderland. Don't lie, John Mayer. And so then Sheena was posting, I think, pictures of old articles or had posted pictures previously. Let me pull it up and see if I can find it here, you guys. It was just, I'm like, just take the L and be like, mm, I guess he just doesn't want to everyone to know about his previous sex life, even though he shared everything about his uh, previous sex life. But I guess he's done with that because he did get taken to task um, because of that. Okay. So let me see if I can find it here. You guys, while you're waiting, smash that like, if you don't mind, because I know I saw it here. It was, and I wanted to read the actual article that she, uh, that there was a picture of where she talks about this back in the day and as do the reporters of this article, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it here in my mess of things, but uh, let's just, we're going to take a look. We're going to take a look, you guys. So smash that like, and while we're waiting, we'll just play a little, uh, a little wonderful commercial that we like. Oh, there's someone at my front door. I'm going to get my husband. Um, so I'll check that out too. So we will be right back after this commercial break. I'd like to make a collect call, please. First name, Bob. Last name is We Out of Baby Eats a Boy. Hello? Collect call for Mr. Bob. We Out of Baby Eats a Boy. Sorry, wrong number. Who's that, dear? Bob. We had a baby. It's a boy. Oh. Stop it! Does that disgust you? Well, you disgust me. I just started this job and my my plugs weren't taking. My parents were brutally murdered and I was fat. So I turned to pot hoping it would solve my problems. But you know something? The only thing it fixed was my life. Look, all I'm saying is if you still want to smoke pot, then be prepared to spend a lot of time laughing with your friends. <laughs> What makes people all over America break down and cry like this? Call 1-900-9099-CRY and hear it for yourself. $2 for the first minute, 45 cents each additional minute. If you're under 18, ask your parents before you call. 1-900-9099-CRY. Oh, Marlena. What a dump. Let's face it, college is expensive. You got tuition, room and board, lava lights. Stereo equipment! But one thing's not expensive. 1-800-COLLECT. It saved up to 44%. That's a lot of money. That's my favorite. Be prepared to spend a lot of time laughing with your friends if you're going to smoke pot, okay? Where's Meredith Marks when I need her? The rumors, the nastiness, the rumors... <laughs> You want me to go there with her husband? I can go there. You can leave. You can leave, Meredith Mark says, that you can leave. All right. Um, oh, trying to find this Sheena screen grab is a lot more difficult when you are constantly... Oh, found it. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, this... And this, and this, this, I'm going to send over to myself and we will take a look here and we take this off the screen, you guys. All right. So let's get this down. Oh, Sheener. Oh, Sheener. Little Sheener. All right. Let's close this and take a look um, because you can't, you can't get stuff past these uh, Bravo accounts, they're good. They're real good. All right, let's open this one first. All right, shout out to TV Talk at um, TV Walla. Let me take a look here. They shared, 
this. Oh my God, Sheena, no. Sheena, no, no, Sheena. All right. So at uh, TV Walla, Sheena kept receipts and shared this five years ago. So five years ago, Sheena allegedly, according to uh, TV Walla and also Bravo Real Housewives community on Reddit, she shared this on her social media, which was it on Snapchat, it looks like? Um, John's new gal. So this was in one of the magazines, like an Us Weekly or something. She's 16 years younger than Jennifer Aniston, they're saying. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. And in this article, uh, it looks like they're saying that Sheena drove to Calabasas, California, um, home of the Kardashians. We all know. Sheena drove to his house, and when she got there, John had takeout food laid out, says the source. He told Sheena that he didn't want to go out because it would be too much of a scene. So they ate in. Uh huh. And she certainly didn't seem to mind. She's already been back to his house in Calabasas a few times, according to this article, which appears to be in Us Weekly. There is always food and beer around, Sheena said. She has loads of fun there. It's like spring break. Oh, my God. <laughs> Not spring break. <laughs> Doesn't sound like a fun spring break. It's just you and him and takeout and beer and wine. I mean, when I went on spring break, I needed a little, where was the wet t-shirt contest? Okay, where was where was the ocean? All right. Um, and while Sheena raves to friends that John is amazing in bed, very tender, oh God, sweet and creative. Oh Lordy. <laughs> and that she's looking for something serious with him. Oh, not something serious. John wants to keep things cash. It's clear Sheena is totally into him and wants this to turn into a real relationship. But John has already told her he's not ready to commit. He said, for now, they're just having fun. And this was written by uh, Heidi Parker is the reporter on this one. And on the other side, so they just have like little, I don't have the whole article here. It's just a little screenshot uh, saying that Sheena was shocked and thrilled when John Mayer asked her out, a source tells Star, she has always thought he was hot. And she said yes right away, writing down her cell phone number, because this is, you know, quite a while ago before we just put our numbers into people's phones um, on a napkin. Oh, that is so old school. That is archaic almost at this point. They flirted the whole time, and he told her she was cute, the gorgeous brunette who has modeled for Ed Hardy and Doritos. <laughs> what? Doritos? <laughs> and was a runner-up? No. Was a runner-up in a Hawaiian tropic pageant. So before Vanderpump, Sheena's credits included... Ed Hardy, which at the time, I mean, Ed Hardy, True Religion, that was like, those were the labels, you know, douchey or not. And Doritos, she held up Doritos and was a runner up in a Hawaiian tropic pad. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. A runner up. It's like when Brittany was like, worked at Hooters or something. Okay. Um, she hung out one-on-one -on -one with the singer at his... Uh, house in Calabasas. So yeah. Oh my goodness, you guys. So that's what <laughs> not. Oh my goodness. Thank you artists for the super chat. Happy Easter to you. I appreciate that so very much. But can you believe that they get, they could, they did Sheena dirty there unless she gave her own credits. If she said, well, I've modeled for Ed Hardy and they're like, wow, that's pretty cool. This is 2008 or 2009. That's awesome. Doritos. Okay, there was that lady in the 90s, early 2000s, who was like the Doritos girl. She was pretty popular. Okay. And I was a runner-up in the Hawaiian Tropic Bikini Contest. Hmm. All right. Okay. Good for you. Good for you, lady. <laughs> Pamela, thank you so much for the super sticker. You guys, it just, it's it's crazy. So um, 
Do I think they hooked up? Yes, yes. Do I think John Mayer just doesn't want to talk about it? Yeah, because it was literally in 2009 and we're in 2024. And I could see if you're like writing a book or something, but just to say on the show for what? We didn't need to know that. That whole orgy scene or the scene where they admit about orgies after playing Never Have I Ever. I, I don't know. I would have liked to know about known about it maybe right when she was on the show. But yeah, um, she got Tostitos in Hawaiian traffic. <laughs> oh no, DJ, I hope you feel better. You're on the sick and shut in list, uh, but you're listening. Yes. Happy Easter to you. And I hope you get better really, really soon. Oh, she was on Greek. I liked that show Greek. That was a pretty good show. That was on like ABC family at the time, I think. Um, and wasn't it Kelsey Grammer? His oldest daughter, I think was in that show. I liked that show. And I think the guy from, what was he on? Veronica Mars was in it. Yeah, but Doritos, how random. Doritos, super random. Yeah, tan lotion and snacks. I'm known for snacks and tanning lotion stuff. I'm Sheena. Oh, we love our Sheena. Okay, now we got to talk about something else, you guys. This is going to get a little serious, and it involves Joe. Okay, so a couple of the accounts I follow on um my no offense, all offense for the Bravo made a point. And I want to see what you guys think. I want to kind of take a poll here. Um, and I wish I remembered which, uh, which account posted this. However, it's one of the Bravo accounts. Let me see if I can just search Joe and they posted about Joe Wenberg. And basically they were saying anyone, you know, who any, uh, Bravo creators or anyone who is kind of, making fun of roasting, doing impressions of Joe, um, that it is, uh, it feels very wrong and that people should stop. Okay. And you know, on my channel as a comedian, I roast, I recap, I do impressions of everybody. That's what I do. However, this account, and I respect their opinion, um, says that now that, uh, Joe has admitted to having ADHD, they think that it is, um, in poor taste. They think that it is more bullying if people talk about Joe, uh, kind of tease like we do with the reality stars, you know, do impressions of her as myself, Ryan Bailey, and many others do. They think, or, you know, just make jokes about it in general, that it is um, bullying. Okay. And we've had this conversation quite a lot, I think, on... Um, on my, you know, no offense, all offense or other shows about the overuse of this word bullying. And, you know, as a comedian, it's hard because if you roast and you recap or you uh, provide commentary or jokes or impressions of people, parodies of people that other people like, you will often be called a bully. There isn't, uh, you know, I shouldn't say there isn't a day, but there's, you know, I, I get quite a bit of comments where if someone likes the person that I'm roasting or likes the person that I'm, you know, doing jokes about, they'll be like, that's bullying. You're bullying Jolene. And, you know, sometimes I do because I'm an adult. I look, it's like, okay, how would they think this is bullying? And, you know, you definitely want to, um, you know, take a look and just see if in fact there's some validity to these points. But then I have to remind myself that as comedians, you know, the goal for me is to make people laugh and find the, and it, I'm not going to succeed in making everybody laugh because comedy is subjective, but to find the funny and be silly. And I know that it is not done with malice. It is not done to truly hurt anyone. But what people forget is that in comedy, there's always a target. I mean, no matter whether it's yourself or someone else, every comedian you see, every, you know, stand up, things like that. SNL, there's always a target. So there's always going to be someone who doesn't like, um, you know, what you're doing. So, um, or someone who is because it's maybe about them, you know, but I will say, I don't think anyone is bullying Joe at this point. Um, I don't even necessarily believe that the women on Vanderpump are bullying Joe. I think Joe is a circumstance where she has behaved in a way 
where uh, these women don't want to be around her. She has made moves that they don't like, being that she was best friends with Kristen Doty again for years. Kristen Doty said they would hang out four times a week. And the minute she could get with Tom Schwartz, she just ditched her friends and disregarded Katie and Katie's feelings and went with Schwartz. And not only went with Schwartz, because, okay, whatever, you, you did that, you know, you chose the, you know, a guy over your friends, which is, you know, pretty shitty, but maybe you've loved him forever and ever. Amen. And you, you know, you finally got him. All right. Good for you. Good, good luck with that. Um, but you also aided and abetted in one of the biggest scandals to ever hit reality television being scandal. And you were seen at the scene of many crimes, not just Big Bear, but double dating with them. You knew about it. You went to Ariana's house. You had Thanksgiving. You ate her food. You sat at her tables all the while knowing that she was being betrayed. And now you're wondering why she wouldn't want anything to do with you. Because I wouldn't want anything to do with people that might have known about something so hurtful against me and celebrated it and went on couples trips with it. Because uh, not that it was up to Joe to out the relationship, but me as a person, if that was happening to someone I considered, you know, within a relationship, uh, where I considered both people, my friends, Ariana, my friend, and I was going to go eat her food in her house. I wouldn't be out there, um, going on double dates with her boyfriend at the time while he was cheating on her. <laughs> That's just not what I would do. So I think it's more of, you know, what Joe, the reaction Joe's getting from both the audience and Vanderpump Rules, again, has uh, and Vanderpump Rules cast has more to do with uh, her behavior and her not owning that. And instead, she wants to pass it off as everyone is a bully and mean to her. And then she wants to hide behind the ADHD. Well, as a woman with ADHD, who uh, maybe that makes me relate a little bit more to even to Joe and in my you know impressions of Joe. I don't think that ADHD has anything to do, in my opinion, with my experience with ADHD of why she would behave in such a way and pick these boys who clearly don't care anything for her um, over the women. Uh, so I think this is being used definitely as an excuse. I think she's definitely trying to hide behind this. You put yourself on the show, opens you up to criticism. It opens you up to parody. It opens you up to satire, it opens you up to a lot of things. You're not going to love it, you know, but I don't think anyone is viciously bullying this woman. If there are, if there is, and she is getting, you know, DMs or people saying these awful things, you know, I hope she's reporting that. But as far as this comment on Instagram saying, no one should make fun of her. We should stop. No one should, you know, provide commentary like that on her. I, I think that's, that's a little too much. Okay. Because again, with our, our friend Joe here, I mean, Everyone on the show is kind of went through stages like this, except for the Toms who just for some reason they're untouchable and they can't even last a season owning their bad behavior and they must be absolved. And Tom Sandoval will go as far as to weaponize his own alleged bad mental health uh, in order to not be held responsible as most people are when they behave poorly. Um, and have to get back into the friend group. Instead, we are being um, told and the cast is being told that you have to, oh, darling, you must forgive him because if you don't, oh my God, then he will hurt himself. And I think that is is really gross that that is being um, held over people's heads. And now I know Joe is running with this. They called me a crackhead, you know? um, narrative. And she really brought this, like call Katie called you spooky. She called you creepy. Um, a whole bunch of things. However, again, I point to exhibit a Joe, you've been making the crackhead joke about yourself for years. This goes back to 2019. I could find on your Instagram. I don't like, and I think most people don't like when adults overuse the word bully because it just, it, it then uh, com it completely, it 
it makes the word not as strong as it should be because there are actual, you know, kids, young adults out there who truly are being being bullied. And it's a really big deal. And it costs, unfortunately, some children take their lives because of these things. OK, but you're a fully formed woman now, a woman with ADHD props to you. I have it, too. It can be a superpower as well as part of, you know, being a little um, uh, neurodivergent, you know. And there are certain struggles, but there's certain gifts we have as well. And I realize like not everyone's ADHD is going to present the same. It presents different in men than it does women. And that's why, you know, in girls and boys, and that's why a lot of girls are um, actually not diagnosed until later in life, because the way it presents in boys is different than the way it presents in girls. And I'm sure you can talk to, you know, many uh, a smarter person than I, much smarter, especially in terms of mental health. But it's something that I've had to deal with, you know, since my 20s when I was diagnosed with ADHD and I was misdiagnosed quite a few times before actually getting the proper diagnosis, the proper medication, the proper therapy for it. Um, and it's something I still struggle with, you know. Um, so but I think hiding behind this is really gross. And also the fact that you have been making this joke about yourself. And I wouldn't be surprised because as if we're just going to say all ADHD people are this way and this is because of ADHD. Well, I too am someone as a comedian and as a person even before I was a comedian who will be self-deprecating. The things I might be the most insecure about, I'll make a joke about first. That's always been my defense mechanism because then you can't get me. And I think a lot of people can probably relate to that. The thing you feel the worst about or the thing you're insecure about, whether it be your weight, your personality, a wonky eye, big nose, small nose, big butt, small butt, you have a joke about it first before anyone else can hurt you with it. So here you are on December 8th, 2019, saying, so I'm not a crackhead. I just always make the same face. So with your argument, you are now opening up this again, another Pandora's box, another thing you probably don't want to open up where you're making fun of people with, if you want to be the person that's like, people are saying I'm a crackhead and they're making fun. It's because I'm ADHD. Well, in this joke, you are not only making fun of yourself, but you're making fun of crackheads. And you're saying that this is what all crackheads look like. And this is what people with uh, legitimate addictions look like. Now, I am not going to be one of those people that is going to <laughs> you know, be that PC and be like, you can't make a crackhead joke because I would be a hypocrite because I'm a comedian. I've made lots of jokes that are off color, on color, you know, just, you know, as comedians, you try things. And, uh, but you then are very insulting to addicts because you're saying, I'm not a crackhead. I just always make the same face. So you're saying crackheads make this embarrassing, weird face. I mean, what are you exactly? I guess I'd have to ask you what you're saying. But also to attribute this crackhead status to Katie Maloney and the women of Vanderpump Rules is very irresponsible and also a lie because you've put this out, which is now on a public Instagram, making jokes about yourself being a crackhead. I mean... Can we just can we just stop? Because then we're just going to it's going to keep being the snowball effect down the hill. Well, you said this and this and this and this and this, this. ma'am, please stop. Please stop. Yes. ADHD can lead people to um, I definitely have since I was little have dealt with, you know, uh, Jolene's a great student, but she doesn't sit in her seat. Or, you know, when I was on sports teams growing up, uh, you know, it, it was it was always, I'm moving around, I'm doing all this. I'm just constantly, and you will see me through streams, you know, play with my hair, shake my leg, do different things. Um, because that is, you know, a lot, a part of, uh, my ADHD and, and the movement and things, but to make this freaking this big thing where you've been bullied. No, it's not. And someone doing an impression of you is also not being bullied. Then you're saying everyone on SNL is a bully and every person who's on a television show who then goes and uh, gets parodied are being bullied. And some people might say, no, it's because of her ADHD. Well, listen, I hate to break this to people that might not know this, but it's 2024 and most people have had some kind of adversity that they have to deal with. There's some kind of mental um whether it be mental health, whether it be physical, whether it be, you know, some kind of neurodivergence, uh, most people are dealing with that. Now, I think if people are outright attributing things and making fun of, oh, she's a weird, I don't even know what people would say about people with ADHD, but like, you know what I mean? Uh, then obviously it's discriminatory. You know, if you are only picking on her because she has ADHD and you hate people with ADHD, 
your prejudice against people with ADHD, then you might have a point here, but you don't have a point. It's ridiculous. You're being ridiculous at this point. You're just not owning the fact that you're a shitty friend to them. They don't want to be your friend because we saw, according to Kristen Doty, what you did in your friendship. You ditched her for Tom Schwartz. And then what did Tom Schwartz do? He ditched you for a 23 year old, but you're still hanging on. You know, your fingertips are holding onto the cracks in the foundation via Kate Nash. You're just holding on to that. But the women aren't going to respond well to you when you behave like this. They're just not. Everything you did went against girl code. Everything you did, it looks sus. It looks, it, it, it it's not something you would trust. It's not something people are going to welcome into their, into their friend group. And I need you to stop, please, with this crackhead narrative that Katie somehow just made up that you're a crackhead. No one thinks you're a crackhead. You have made the joke of being a crackhead. You have probably, as I was pointing out earlier, made this joke in the company of some of the Vanderpump people while you were friends with Chris and Doty and them. Okay. Because again, it's something we do. We all have little jokes about ourselves, whether they're defense mechanisms, we think they're funny, some kind of self-deprecating thing. You've probably brought it up before. Okay. I'm just like so tired of this. And when I see this and I see this kind of like now, oh, now she's a victim. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Don't funk with our brains. Okay. As a fellow ADHD lady, um, nothing we are doing or saying has anything to do with your ADHD. That's like me saying anyone who criticizes me here on my channel is, is a hater and mean and bullying because I have ADHD. So now no one can criticize me. No one can make fun. No one can. It just, do you see how ridiculous that sounds? Now I get some people might be more sensitive to that because I do see people that are like, I have a child who has that and they struggle at school. And that is why grown adults who make bad decisions shouldn't be out putting misinformation that they're being bullied. No, you are just receiving the consequences of your actions. It is a completely different story when this happens to children. And then you're going to trigger the moms you know, who are like, oh my God, my child deals with that. No, stop it. You're using that. You're weaponizing it. Just own that you did some shitty shit. I didn't want to have to talk about this that much, but it's gross that she's doing this and she's putting this out there and she's making these videos. Cause again, when she made a dumb video about Schwartz or she made a, sorry, a post about Schwartz about how she loves him. And then I think she deleted it allegedly. Um, but she was singing his praises while he was out with a 23 year old. And the people were like, girl, it's looking very desperado. <sighs> then she went on her social media because she does these interesting stories. I mean, they're interesting, ma'am, um, where she's like, after the reunion, after the reunion was filmed and how she was thanking people for supporting her and her relationship or her friendship with a man. Let's just take a listen. Okay. We were there for each other. It Okay, let me see if I can get this. By the way, okay. I will say this. I'm, hi, okay, so I'm so happy that you guys um, have been very receptive to a woman posting about a male friendship. Tom Schwartz. We were there for each other in moments that, I can't even explain. And I'm going to be honest. It's so nice that there's actually a place like Instagram to be able to post about somebody that influenced your life in a positive way. And the people that have been like, yes, it's okay to be friends with a guy. It's okay to be, you know, I really appreciate you. The hate, I don't, but at the end of the day, I'm good. I will say this. I'm, hi. Okay. So I'm so happy that you guys um, have been very receptive to a woman posting about a male friendship. Tom Schwartz. We were there for each other in moments that I can't even explain. And I'm going to be honest. It's so nice that there's actually a place like Instagram to be able to post about somebody that influenced your life in a positive way. And 
the people that have been like, yes, it's okay to be friends with a guy. It's okay to be, you know, I really appreciate you. The hate, I don't, but at the end of the day, I'm good. What are you, what are you even saying? I, she does, she did this with hats too. I'm so glad I could, like, she could bring awareness to the fact that women can wear hats. We know we don't need you. Do you think that highly of yourself that you think that's like a novel idea? It is not. We have hats. We all wear hats. We've worn hats. Okay. Sheena had a couple drinks, uh, in her after, with her Zoloft and told you to take the hat off. Okay. But that doesn't mean that everyone in the world now hates your hats. You know what they hated? That it was a Tom Tom hat and you're showing up to the party with a hat supporting two of the most problematic dudes. And you know who the last person to do that was Rachel Raquel. And what did she do? Stab all of her friends in the back and had a secret affair with Tom Sandoval. And then you now are showing up in the Tom Tom hat. You ditched Katie, you ditched Kristen Doty allegedly, and you just ran with the dudes. So now they're like, oh, we've seen this before. <laughs> so when she's like, I'm just, you guys, I'm so, okay. Oh my God. Okay. I'm so happy that there are people out there that understand like that you can be all friends with guys. <sighs> what in the kindergarten is happening here? Was What is, what? No one is questioning whether you could be friends with men or not. They're questioning your problematic snake moves when it comes to befriending the men who are doing your your friends dirty and then trying to take their spot and then being accomplice to the scandal of it all. I, I, ma'am, ma'am, please, this isn't for you. If this is how you're going to behave, this isn't for you. And if this is how you're going to behave, we're going to roast it. We're It's funny. It's re so ridiculous humor it, it that's all we can do to process it is laugh you are it looks to be genuinely getting on your social media to say hey guys just so you know women you can wear hats and still be beautiful and you know what else you can be friends with boys you're welcome okay thanks gloria steinem what what no we what is happening here this <laughs> it's too cuckoo it's just it's and you think pretty highly of yourself that you think you're like making a difference. These women were friends with Tom Schwartz. They know they could be friends with them, but they also know he's a shitty friend allegedly to them. And he was a shitty husband. And that's not even allegedly. It might be subjective, but I think he was a pretty shitty husband. So they don't want to be. <sighs> Sincerely, Shelly, thank you so much for the super sticker. It's just, I, I'm just watching her try to paint herself as a victim, just like Tom Sandoval does, just like Tom Schwartz sometimes does. And it's, it's tired. No one's bullying you. None of the things you bring up are novel ideas. You're not, you know what a real feminist move could be? Supporting the women, not shitting on the women to support the problematic men. That's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. You are the antithesis of feminism. You're not at all supporting any of the women. You're shitting on them to get in the good favor of shitheads. Not even good men, like shitty men. <laughs> I mean, oh my gosh. Zero accountability. Yes, Mtronics. Same as Rachel as Tom and Tom and Tom. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It just so when I saw that, I was just like, no, I understand. I understand why certain people like this Bravo account would question, like, is it making fun of Joe? And maybe everyone should stop because she's doing a pretty good job of painting herself as a victim. But if you really look into, you know, what she's posted on social media and what she's done to these women, she is no victim. You are a grown lady from Wisconsin. I'm a grown lady from Minnesota. We both got that ADHD and we both like hats. That does not make us a victim. Okay. No one is going, oh, that Joe with the 80. We didn't know you had it until you said you had it. What are you talking about? No one is making fun of you because of that. We're making fun of how ridiculous this whole relationship is with you and Tom and how ridiculous it is that you guys think you're victims on this show. We're going to have an opinion. We're going to have commentary. That's what happens when you're on these television shows. Okay. No one's wishing harm upon you. No one's trying to hurt you like that. It's please stop. Please stop. Please stop. We need to, it like diminishes what bullying really is. And how uh, it just, it, it hurts people who are really bullied, especially kids. And then the parents of kids, you are essentially trying to manipulate them 
into being like, see, I was once a kid with that too. And look what they're doing to me. And it's like, no, you were doing shitty shit. You were being a shitty person to these women. You were, you were not loyal. You were snaky. And that has nothing to do with ADHD. If anything, you, ma'am, are putting us all down with ADHD, saying we're going to do stuff like that. I'm not going to do stuff like that. And certainly not because they have ADHD. The only time I would do something like that is if I just, you know, decided to be a shitty person. And not that I haven't done shitty stuff before. But you can't blame the ADHD. And you can't weaponize it. It's just ridiculous, okay? Judy says, yes, we know the background of our actions. Yeah, most people do. Most people do. HC says, geez, most people aren't anti hat or anti i I've never heard anyone being anti-ADHD. <laughs> I really haven't. Uh, I think there people can be misunderstood because of it, but, or hate ADHD people. Don't agree with her snake-like behavior. Yep. Justin Bieber loves you, loves me. Um, Tom Schwartz, like people are saying in the chat, he calls you Joseph to friend zone you. You called yourself a crackhead, ma'am. And that followed you because you labeled yourself as that. Schwartz put the hat on her head and said, get in there. Good luck while I hide behind this plant. Exactly. If anything, Schwartz is bullying you. He's the one that's throwing you in and making you the target so that the Toms aren't the target. If you, if women who hang out with the Toms haven't seen this already, this is what they do. I saw this excellent tweet. Okay. So at uh, CC loves you. Shout out to CC loves you on Instagram. CC loves you on uh, Twitter. Uh, a wonderful um, account. And uh, right, I love hats too. I love hats. Yeah, feminist leader Joe over there. Uh, uh, there is a Don Gumvelson parody. Is he getting bullied too? Should we warn Don Gumvelson you're being bullied because there's a parody account of you? <laughs> he says uh, the cheating sucks, but it happens. What we are more concerned with Sandoval's pattern of isolating women, convincing them he's all they have, and telling them how to feel. His rage when they break from the script. And that is so important. That's one of the biggest takeaways we've learned from Kristen, Ariana, and Rachel Raquel. When people say Sandoval is dangerous, these kind of people are dangerous. Because what we've seen, what he did with Ariana, what he did with Kristen, and what he did with Rachel Raquel when she was crying, saying, but he's all I have. And how we've learned that many of his friends knew about this affair, but not many of her. She wasn't able to tell because he wanted control of her. So he does these things. And Lala, you even called it out, yet you want to be friends with someone who does this? This is predatory behavior he's doing. This is Randall-esque behavior. So this pattern of isolating women, convincing them he's all they have, and then telling them how to feel what they can say, or he'll take that love away. He'll take that love bombing away. He'll take um, everything you have because now you've built your whole world around this manipulative asshole. And then his rage when they break from the script and how he loves to yell at women to the point where he's been seen on the show saying, oh, God, if I was a gay man, I could yell at women if I, you know, but as a cisgendered man, I can. He calls himself a cis, not a cisgendered man. He loves yelling at women. He got mad because he could not yell at the women. We all remember that. We play it. Let's play it again. Okay, but since he's a straight man, he can't do it. Always yell, do whatever you feel entitled to do. But as a cis, as a straight male, the new thing is that, you know, as a cis male. Um, Did you say cis? Oh, he said cis. He definitely said cis. Okay, let me see if I have the full, I don't even know if I still have the full clip here. But we all remember that clip of him saying this stuff and we're like, I'm sorry, what? What is he doing? What is he saying? He wants to yell at women and he has now left a trail of women who he has uh, seemingly enjoyed yelling at. Um, and that he wishes, oh, here's the full clip, that he wishes that, you know, he wasn't a cis male, a straight male, a, a male born a male who, you know, identifies as a male because if he wasn't, he could just yell at these bitches all day long. The new thing is that, you know, as a cis male, um, Did you say cis? Raise your voice, yell, do whatever you feel entitled to do, but as a cis, 
as a straight male, if I was a woman, I could do that. If I was a gay male, I could do that. But as a straight male, if I raise my voice, it's wrong. And that's Tom Zandibot. That is Tom Zandibot. That is the guy that Joe and them, do you, do you notice too? I mean, Joe, you're not making it easy on yourself. Joe, every time a scene where Tom Sandoval enters the scene, she loses it like it's 1960, whatever, and she's seeing the Beatles for the first time. It's like she's meeting Gavin Rosdale in 1998. She's like, hi, Tom. I love Tom. Tom, Tom. Like he's Tom, Tom Sandoval, not Tom Schwartz, who she, you know, loves. But it's weird. Convince me that they haven't hooked up at one time because I'm finding it hard to believe. That's my new conspiracy theory, okay? Conspiracy, bravo conspiracy theory from Jolene is that at one time, uh, maybe they just swap a room. Maybe that was why Sandoval was okay with um, Tom Schwartz kissing on Rachel Raquel, not only to hide his relationship, but maybe they were like, hey, you can have a little bit of Joe. I have a little bit. And Joe's like, I want a little bit of him. And they were like trading. And she looked like she was very consensual about it. Because every time he comes in, she's like, Tom, I love you, Tom. I love you. Because even when he came to Ziggy's last episode, she was, you know, doing her little, you know, la, 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 la. And then Tom comes up and she's like, I love you, Tom. And he wasn't even talking to her. He wasn't even talking to her. And she, go back and rewatch that scene. scene. Yeah, Tom Shady, but watch the scene. She like, hi, Tom. Hi, Tom. It's weird it's weird Susie says didn't he say there was someone that is so <gasps> he did as part of the friend group that he hooked up with he did remember and we all assumed it was billy lee oh my god it's joe oh <gasps> you guys it makes more sense and the way she acts <gasps> We got to do some research into this. I think we're onto something. I really do. No offense, all offense. I think we are onto something. And we have seen Billy Lee pimping out all her friends. She's pimping out T. She probably pimped out Joe. <gasps> oh, I think we might be onto something, you guys, allegedly. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Well, maybe I'm going to have to dig a little bit, dig a little bit. If any secret sources want to hit me up, JoleneReacts at gmail.com or Instagram DMs, I'll be more than happy to hear your story. Yeah, the Twitter account isn't actually Don. It's a parody account of Don. Um, it's very funny. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Natasha, great point. Why are we treating these people like they're naive 20-year-olds? These people are closer to middle age than college. I can't with the naivety. No. And that's what that's what they kind of want. You know, with this whole, she's being bullied. You you cannot bully this 38-year-old lady who knows what she's doing. No, no, no. No, 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 no. Stop it. Stop it. And why is it only bullying when people are calling you out for behavior you don't want to recognize or own? Chickenhead, thank you for the super chat. Chickenhead says, you cracked the code. I think I might have. I really did. Hi, DC. Good to see you. HC says, this is Arrested Development in full display. Sheena was rude. But to call it bullying is hyperbolic. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. She's like 38 or something. Let's look up how old Joe Wenberg is. Joe Wenberg age. She might be like 35, but she's like too, too, too old to be claiming these things. Uh, she's probably 36 because she was 35 in 2023. She was born in 88. That's too old to be bullied. That's no. Mm -mm, not like this. Not like this. Not saying adults can't be bullied. Of course, there's situations like that. But give me a break. Give me a break. Okay. Thank you. Sunny shine. So, I mean, she's 36. That's close to 38. Oh, that's close. Um, Judy said, I actually saw a little bit of Billy and the Kid podcast for research with T on it. And she... Uh, should uh she should a little bit regarding going out with Tom or shared a little bit about going out with Tom in that combo with Ariana. She actually liked Ariana. I heard about that. I heard that Billy Lee continues to be very anti Ariana and T was like, no, I what she was saying like made sense. Thank you, Judy, for sharing that. And it's like Billy, give it up. 
give it up. Okay. You liked Ariana just a couple months ago. And now all of a sudden you have to completely dislike her. Stop, 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 stop. You know, and like Ariana said, it's, it's not bullying Joe. If anything, wouldn't it be more bullying that all of them came into Ariana's house with the secret over her head and sat at her table, smiled in her face all the while lying. So, mm, 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 mm. okay. This is, uh, that segment went a little longer than I expected, but it's okay. You guys, now we are going to move on to the Diddy gate of it all. All right. So stories, uh, Diddy gate far from over. We still have not seen any kind of, um, arrest. No one, no, no one has been indicted any of those things. Um, however, Diddy has been seen. Um, again, he seems to be in Miami, despite not being uh, arrested. He was seen in Miami and more allegations have come out against him. And we are going to, this is the last segment we'll have today on No Offense, All Offense. We're going to talk about it. So here is Diddy spotted in Miami, nervously smoking as feds widen investigation further into his alleged S trafficking ring with Hollywood elites. Again, everything's alleged, um, but okay, let's see what they have to say. And this is according to The Independent. So Diddy is seen in Miami as more allegations come out after Homeland Security raid. You know, his house was raided uh, last Monday. Uh, two homes were raided. And things were taken and people are wondering if it's these alleged freak off tapes and these tapes that would uh, maybe prove the S trafficking and um, prove that not only did he S traffic people, but uh, that there were minors included in this. OK, which goes along with the lawsuits from uh, Cassie, which was settled in November. You know, she had some so many allegations against Diddy and they were horrific. Uh, and little Rod, Rodney, who was a producer living with him for a period of time has filed this most recent lawsuit. Um, and it's a $30 million lawsuit, uh, alleging a lot of things. And there's some receipts in there and some screenshots and pictures of Diddy allegedly, uh, getting intimate, uh, dancing, kissing someone, uh, who would be considered a minor. So Sean Diddy Combs has been reportedly spotted several times in South Florida during the Easter weekend. So this weekend, despite a major raid on his exclusive Star Island mansion just days before. Combs was seen interacting with fans at Pira Vida restaurant near First Street and Washington Avenue on Friday and riding a bicycle near his property. Earlier on Friday, he was uh, reportedly spotted at Top Golf in Sweetwater. And I think people saw him there possibly with his twin daughters. Okay, I do love a Top Golf, but all right. On uh, Monday, again, his properties in Los Angeles and Miami were raided by officials from Homeland Security in connection to federal S trafficking investigation. Combs described the actions of the HSI agents as a gross overuse of military level force. Um, probably not. With the allegations that I've read, I don't think it's a gross overuse. I, I, it's pretty serious. The same day, a man police have described as Diddy's drug mule, Brendan Paul, y'all remember him, the little basement dweller looking dude, was arrested by federal agents in Miami airport for allegedly carrying contraband inside of his personal bags when they were trying to get on a, uh, I believe it was one of Diddy's uh, planes, his private plane. Oh, I think since Brendan Paul, the um, alleged drug mule of Diddy has been released uh, on bail. Since the raids, other famous figures have weighed in on the case, including rapper 50 Cent. The raids come after Diddy has faced accusations of SA from multiple alleged victims in a series of lawsuits in recent months. So not only was it Cassie, not only was it Lil Rod, but there was another woman named and there was a couple of Jane Doe's. So people are coming out of the woodwork um, with their allegations because this tends to happen, you know, with someone who's this powerful, people are afraid to speak and um, they're also intimidated into silence. And then once some bigger names start opening the door up to this, then people feel comfortable sharing their story. They also in New York state 
um, had this brief opening of a year for the statute of limitations that exists that says, you know, in this statute, you have this amount of time to um, go after, you know, to uh, if you are accusing someone of essay and these types of crimes. But after it, I don't know, the statute of limitations, again, doesn't make any sense to me. I think what we've learned and we've progressed to be this big year of 2024 that sometimes it takes people a very long time, if ever, to be able to come forward um, with their stories when they've been victims of this. So the New York State opened it up, and that is when Cassie and a bunch of other people um, filed these lawsuits because they uh, were able to. This was like a chance for them and other victims of SA and, and crimes such as these to um, file charges if they chose to. Okay. So, um, inside the raids, other famous, so, so 50 cent talked about it. Uh, the raids come after Diddy faced all these allegations and lawsuits, a lawsuit brought in February alleged that Diddy essayed, uh, music producer, Rodney Jones, AKA Lil Rod and forced him to have sex with sex workers that people are saying he trafficked. So he brought, you know, over state lines, to uh to do to to do the mess um sean diddy combs spotted so paid for profited off of all those things a little different than just being considered a pimp when you're a s trafficker sean diddy combs spotted in florida over easter weekend um several times like they said in south florida and after this major raid um, on his exclusive Star Island mansion just days before that match. I think Rosie O'Donnell has a house on. A lot of celebrities have a house on this exclusive Star Island. Combs was seen interacting with fans, like they said, at this Pura Vida. Uh, early on Friday, he was at Top Golf. Um, and then uh, since then, more speculation and allegations have come forward with these videos of him and Justin Bieber. So Diddy, there's a video that has resurfaced of Diddy grilling a nervous Justin Bieber 16 in this resurfaced clip. Um, and Diddy can be seen questioning a nervous Justin Bieber who looks to be around 16 about why he's, su he's supposedly been keeping his distance in a clip that has resurfaced in the wake of the raids on the music moguls' homes. Now, we know that much like Usher, uh, Usher was sent to live with Diddy for like the Diddy music camp for like a year or something. And he admitted on Howard Stern, he saw a lot of things. He hasn't said exactly what he's seen. Usher has also been named as allegedly possibly someone who has taken part in some of these um, uh, sexual acts with um, sex workers, possibly minors. And then, you know, Usher found Justin Bieber on the YouTube, I believe. And then Justin Bieber was sent to kind of hang out with Diddy when he was very young, I think 14 or 15 years old. So it was like the pattern was allegedly repeating itself and just pretty gross. So a couple of these videos have resurfaced and I watched some of them and it was uh, just problematic because at the time, one of the videos uh, of Diddy and Bieber, I mean, Bieber would have been like 14 or 15 and Diddy was like, almost a 40 year old, if not a 40 year old man. And the way he was just talking with him, interacting, creep city, very creepy, very sus, especially now with all of these allegations coming out. So born Sean Combs, the rapper, label owner, and business mogul was subjected to raids on his properties because he's a part of this, you know, federal S trafficking investigation. Um, but Diddy's lawyers are like, no, he was not detained um, and spoke to authorities. And it was this was an overuse and this military level is ridiculous. But this certain clip that the media has since Monday been circulating on social media, um, it's Diddy and Bieber are shown together in a recording studio. Okay. It is unclear what the footage was filmed for, but it appears to have been taken around the time the future pop star was recording his 2010 album or debut album, My World 2.0. Uh, clips of Diddy's awkward exchanges with Bieber have resurfaced in the wake of the raids. So there's more than just that. And I've seen a couple of them and they gave me the creeps. Now we know Cuba Gooding Jr. also has been named a defendant in Lil Rod Rodney Jones's lawsuit um, and accused of S contact uh, or SA 
in the lawsuit. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. So Cuba Gooding Jr. has been named in an amended lawsuit that accuses music model, mogul Sean Diddy Combs of S trafficking, SA, and the distribution of narcotics and firearms. The actor known for films including Boys in the Hood and Jerry Maguire was named as part of an amendment filed on Monday. Ugh. 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 Diddy spotted for the first time. Um, so he's out. He's about. Uh, I think there was even, he's like, at this point, did he give salute to love after being spotted for second time following Homeland Security raid? So he's like, hey, it's me. I'm Diddy. I'm fine. But then people are catching him smoking and <laughs> pacing. So, oh, goodness, goodness. Uh, okay. All right. All right. Let's get back and see what else they, they are saying about this. Um, Diddy's backup dancer is revealing a horrific experience with the rapper. A former backup dancer of Sean Diddy Combs has spoken out to reveal her horrific experience with the rapper after his homes in Los Angeles and Miami were raided this week. Tanika Ray said in a social media post that she knew to avoid him at all costs, adding that nothing that is happening is surprising. So this is his backup dancer, Tanika Ray. I just knew to avoid him at all costs. Yes, I danced for him and I kept my space. I interviewed him for his projects and kept my space. Nothing that is happening is surprising, she wrote, according to page six. A lawsuit filed in November has accused Diddy of running an S trafficking operation, of hiding hidden cameras in his home, and of forcing the plaintiff, music producer Ron Jones, a uh, little Ron, uh, into having sex with sex workers, among other claims. Combs has strongly denied all the allegations made against him. He has not been charged with any crime or indicted yet. Okay, I've seen a lot of the long crime channels. They're saying it's coming. Everyone's saying it's coming. When? I don't know. Some people are saying that they're using Diddy almost as the vessel uh, to bring down even bigger people. Names have been thrown around like Clive Davis, things like that. So, I mean, I don't know at this point, that's all speculation, but interesting that no indictment has happened and no arrest has happened, but we had these big Homeland Security raids. But some of the lawyers that Law and Crime Network spoke to were saying that it's actually not completely uncommon. This could happen. Um, this could just be their attempt, um, a strong attempt to make sure that they are able to obtain evidence before it is destroyed or disseminated. And if we do have minors in these videos, knowing that now allegedly there are all of these hidden cameras throughout his house, they might be on the hustle to make sure to, uh, to get these tapes or find these tapes before they are sent out. Um, or distributed to people. There also could, I mean, who knows? There's so many executives, rappers, actors, singers who are allegedly, or to, who have alleged attended these Diddy parties and could possibly be involved. And then there, there's a whole group of people who could have went to Diddy's parties who didn't even know this was going on because it had occurred, you know, and these huge mansion homes. And it seems like there were certain rooms where this stuff would happen. So if you weren't in that room, you might not know. You might've heard rumblings. You might not have, you know. So um, Diddy's private jet is back in Florida. Sean Diddy Combs' private jet has landed back in Florida after it left the country on the day, which was sus, that his LA and Miami homes were raided by Homeland Security. The jet flew to Antigua and, uh, Another country, I don't know if it was Bermuda, Bar Barbuda, uh, apologies, I'm not sure, on the day the feds raided the rapper's home. The plane returned on Wednesday morning and has remained parked at the Miami Opa Laka Executive Airport ever since. Diddy has not made an official public appearance, other than being seen around Florida, um, since the federal raids, but released a statement that we saw that there was an overuse of force. Okay. Um, we know that he has multiple people suing him, including Cassie, who he filed with within 48 hours, which is crazy. 
that's to me, you know, they say, well, that doesn't mean he's guilty of anything to me. It says that's exactly what that means. You want to settle for a very large amount, allegedly eight figures that quickly. That looks sus to me. Now, 50 Cent entered the chat. We talked about this previously. Um, when his uh, child's mother, Daphne Joy, was being alleged to be one of the sex workers working for Diddy. Uh, to the point where, you know, um, 50 said that he was going to seek full custody of their child because of this. And they, he also got in a um, fight with Stevie J online. He was making posts all over. I didn't know you was a sex worker, you little sex worker, LOL. Yo, this shit is a movie. And then Stevie J, he called out Stevie J and Stevie J says, oh, you want to fight? Let's fight. <laughs> and then I was asking in the comments who would win between Stevie J and, um, and 50. And it seemed like a lot of people, uh, it was kind of split down the middle. Then 50 Cent posted this, and it's a picture of Daphne and Diddy. And he said, you moved a mile away in hopes of having another baby with me, but I was busy. So you moved back, and then you started receiving money from Brother Love, which is Diddy and his love album and his, you know, his new persona, his new name. Um, now, here we are, little sex worker. Oh, goodness. Um which then apparently led to 50, 19 hours ago, uh, the Independent was reporting that 50 Cent den denies ex Daphne Joy's claims of R and physical abuse after she was named in the Diddy lawsuit. So 50 Cent has denied claims that he R'd, I can't say the word because YouTube will demonetize and take down my video, and physically abused his former girlfriend, Daphne Joy. Joy accused the rapper and business mogul of the evil actions in an Instagram post on Thursday, March 28th. So after Daphne was named, we found out she was named in a lawsuit as a sex worker for Diddy. And after 50 started talking about it, that's when she came back, Joy did, and said, uh, was actually, no, look at what, this is what, what 50 Cent did to me. And she accused him of SA and physical abuse on Thursday, March 28th. And this is after he mocked her on social media for being mentioned as a sex worker in Rodney Lil Rod Jones lawsuit against Sean Diddy Combs. So, I mean, right now it's he said, she said, you know, uh, uh, who knows what to believe anymore. So um, she wrote, let's put the real focus on your true evil actions of aring me and abusing me. You are no longer my oppressor and my God will handle you from this point on, Daphne Joy wrote on Instagram. Um, his team have now denied her allegations of essay and abuse as false and baseless. This is, this is 50's team said that Daphne's allegations are false and baseless. In a statement to The Hollywood Reporter on Thursday, March 28th, representatives for 50 Cent, whose real name is Curtis Jackson, said... The disturbing allegations in the sworn pleadings recently filed in a court case related to Daphne Joy, the mother of my 12-year-old child, has required me to take all necessary legal action to protect my son, Sire. The most recent false and baseless accusations by Daphne Joy are clearly in response to my decision to seek sole custody of my son. My son, Sire, is my main priority, and keeping him in a safe environment is my only focus at the time. Oh, my gosh. And then 50 Cent confirmed a release of a documentary about Sean Diddy Combs, which was interesting considering that the image he pulled up with the Diddy Do It was an image that was also used by a YouTube channel that I follow that did what appeared to be uh, like an investigative look into Diddy and these allegations. So I wasn't sure if he was just trolling, but did, but you know, 50 does have a production company and us Bravo fans know all too well. He formerly worked with Randall Emmett, Lala Kent's ex and baby daddy. And, uh, he owed, uh, 50 money and that, uh, 
gave us years ago, Fofty Gate, when 50 went after <laughs> Lala Kent and Randall Emmett for the money because they were they would co-produce things. And now we know that allegedly Randall Emmett never had any money to begin with. He was a big scammer and 50 called him out, which made him very scared to the point where he couldn't even write 50. He wrote, please, Fofty, don't. Please, no, Fofty. And it became a very funny running joke. So, oh my goodness. Let's see what you guys have to say. So every day there seems to be more and more allegations. These allegations from Daphne Joy coming out about 50 after she's named in this lawsuit and after he mocked it and after he was going for, um, you know, full custody. It's interesting. It's interesting. Um, Mystery Singer says, I believe 50 about Diddy. Mm -hmm. Yes, Layla, money by Monday. He was like, money by Monday, Randall. Randall, you better pay me my money. And Randall was like, please, Fofty, no. And then Randall Emmett took a picture of himself with heart monitors taped up to him like he was having a damn heart attack. He was trying to get <laughs> become another victim saying, you know, uh, he was weaponizing some alleged health scare because he, he didn't have the money to pay him. But I think ultimately he got his money. Um. That's interesting. It is interesting now to kind of take a look at who stayed away from Diddy, who was kind of, you know, doing business with Diddy, partying with Diddy, friends with Diddy, uh, adjusted fates at Eminem. I always noticed he stayed safe distance from Diddy. I don't remember them being in the same vicinity very often other than maybe like an awards show. But I also know that Eminem, uh, I think he stopped going to award shows a while back. Um, so, yeah. Anna says, I reference Money by Monday, Randall, all the time, but none of my friends ever get it. It was such a big time within the Bravo world, too, because it was just hilarious. Um, but yeah, this, this has brought me down a track where I have been looking, going through Diddy's old like Instagram lives and things. And I found one with Young Miami um when they were on they were it was last october and i'm gonna post it on here for you guys i'm just gonna do a couple more edits to it but it is very interesting to watch so they were i think through apple music they were doing some kind of show i don't know whose show it was but young miami was there his son justin combs was there he was there his team and then whoever hosts the show and they were talking about the love album and doing promotion for that. But just the things he was talking about, about going off the grid and um, now knowing what we know with all these allegations and lawsuits against him, it is very interesting to take a look at interviews and things Diddy has said in the past. And for me, it's always like piecing together my little, um, you know, I, I get to use my background in journalism, which I did go to school for, but I wanted to be a comedian more um, and kind of look for red flags, look for things and just open up discussions about these things. So um, I'm just <laughs> spending a lot of time <laughs> looking into these uh, uh, things because it, it's interesting. It's disturbing and uh, very interesting. Um, so I'll, I'll post that up uh, soon. But there's so many Instagram lives to look for and any clues or things. I don't know if I think I'm a damn detective or something, but maybe I've been watching too much Dateline. Thank you. B Bean says Jolene is greater than Dateline NBC. I mean, hire me. They could always hire me if they wanted to. But uh, but yeah, it is. It, you know, I think we all since the, the beginning of the, you know, crime podcast popularity, we all kind of think of ourselves as little detectives. And now with social media, we find out that much like the criminals of the past before social media, you know, there are a lot of clues and things that are dropped um, prior to people getting caught. Whatever happens with Diddy, there are a lot of clues leading up to this. And there was so much chatter about Diddy and his parties and what was actually going on. And now with all these names, um, you know, and the meek mill of it all, it's just like, oh my gosh. And what was Diddy actually doing? What? And he was out here allegedly promising Grammys to Stevie J, to Meek Mill, to uh, Lil Rod. A uh, Lil Rod in his lawsuit says that, like for sex acts. He was like, hey, you hook up with me. You let me hit it. And we do this thing with his hidden cameras, allegedly. Uh, he could get you a Grammy. And I'm like, damn, 
And this is this isn't anything that's like unfortunately it's not new to us society or the entertainment business because it's the Harvey Weinstein effect. I mean, it's essentially exactly what Harvey Weinstein did. He was like, would take these women, victimize them and, uh, you know, use his power and be like, if you want a career, if you want to stay in this business, if you want this, if you want that, if you want this part, you better come to my hotel room. And then, you know, there would be some kind of um, sexual uh, thing in exchange for these things. These, these women were getting, um, you know, assaulted, harassed, pressured into this. And a lot of people were silenced for so long because Harvey Weinstein held so much power in Hollywood. And it's just, it's terrifying, you know, which ultimately led to, um, amongst other things, the Me Too movement of men and women coming forward in entertainment, mostly like acting, saying, hey, hashtag Me Too, this happened to me. You know, I was um, propositioned. I was, you know, assaulted by Harvey's, you know, cock just out in the wild and invited me up to his hotel room. And there he's in his, um, he's in his uh, towel, like very disgusting things. The things about Louis C.K. came out, how he would invite like women comedians to his room. And then he would like masturbate in front of them or he would call them on the phone and they could tell he was jacking off. And he was canceled for like two seconds and now he's back and people love him. So uh, this is these these pervs with power. So essentially now they're just calling Diddy the Harvey Weinstein of the music business. So and and also the Jeffrey Epstein, because, you know, we have uh, what appears to be with Jeffrey Epstein with the island and with the plane. Now, Diddy has a plane. He's got his mansions and some yacht that they're uh, looking into that, too. So very gross. And the, and the, and the drugging of people too. Yes. Variant. Good point. I believe Diddy was uh, dragging. I know you meant uh, drugging because you uh, corrected here was drugging artists and essaying them. Yes. There are interviews in which he seemed to be dog whistling the possible victims like fabulous and Justin Bieber. Oh, and there are people who have called it out. I mean, with Harvey Weinstein, there was Courtney Love notoriously um, had said that uh, or infamously or, or famously, whatever you would say, had said, do I have advice for like women in the business? If Harvey Weinstein invites you to his hotel room, say no. And with Diddy, uh, you can see that there have been little things, whether it be Cat Williams or other artists who have made reference to Diddy, you know, doing this Cosby style. So Diddy is like a culmination of Cosby, Harvey, Epstein, like the worst of the worst, it appears to these allegations is what we're dealing with, with him. Um, and like HC is saying, yeah, boats and planes are essentially mobile prisons made to sequester and isolate the victims, it seems. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Well, we are over two hours, you guys. And so I am going to wrap this up. But um, obviously, it's never over. Uh, fortunately and unfortunately, uh, the fun we have, but also the, some of these stories. Uh, but there will be more. Uh, that'll be coming forward because a lot of people think an indictment is soon to follow charges, something. Uh, but we will see. We will see. There's There was also like Al B. Sure was kind of commenting, I saw, uh, or maybe cryptically posting about, you know, because if you, if you follow the Diddy stuff, you know, there's a lot of death around this man. Okay. People who were maybe allegedly about to share their stories, write a book, do a documentary. Um, I'll be sure was someone who got, um, he lived, but he, you know, formerly with Kim Porter, uh, Diddy's ex, uh, they had a child, Quincy. Quincy was then, I believe, adopted legally by Diddy. But Al Bisher recently put out a post after finding all this out and said, hey, Quincy, you are welcome. You can come home. You know, your biological dad. And whether he was there for him before, he's saying now, come on, uh, come on home. And then Al Bisher, um almost passed away. In the summer of 2022, he collapsed and was rushed to the hospital where he fell into a coma that lasted more than two months. But the cause of the incident has never really been revealed. So now there's like suggestions that did Diddy have, I mean, these are all speculation, rumors, allegedly, did Diddy have play a role in that? 
you know, the 55 year old um, R and B singer formerly signed to Uptown records, a record label that Diddy interned under Andre Harrell, which there have been lots of weird since, you know, Andre Harrell passed away a couple years ago, but there there's been a lot of um, accusations that maybe Andre Harrell had groomed Diddy and then Diddy, then this grooming people. And it's this gross cycle of S abuse, but R and B singer, I'll be sure the biological father of Sean Diddy Combs, adult stepson Quincy seemingly implied Friday, uh, the embattled hip hop mogul was somehow tied into a mysterious coma in 2022. Now, remember, Kim Porter passed away under what appeared to be at the time very mysterious circumstances that they then said was pneumonia, but it took them a little bit to get to that. But she was a pretty healthy woman um, and relatively young. So I don't know if they're going to open that back up now. Who knows? OK, so the 55 year old um, off on your own artist surprised those in attendance at the Equal Justice Now Awards in Los Angeles. And this is according to the Daily News, where he announced an upcoming project about his life and appeared to make reference to Sean P. Diddy, brother love Combs. He said, we're going to be producing the LB Sure life story. The Grammy nominee told the crowd as seen in a clip shared by TMZ. So hold on to your britches and you'll really understand how I ended up in a coma. You're really going to need to call Homeland Security. And Homeland Security would obviously be uh, the reference to Diddy. And again, in the summer of 2022, um, LB collapsed and was rushed to the hospital and fell into a coma that lasted two months, but he lived. And the cause of the incident has never been revealed. To those in the audience, Albie's mention of Homeland Security was seemingly a nod to federal agents raiding Diddy's properties. The Department of Homeland Security confirmed the raids were part of an S trafficking investigation. Oh my goodness. And again, you know, Albie had his son Quincy with the late model actress Kim Porter, with whom Diddy was in an on and off again relationship with from 1994 to 2007. And it's been reported that he was very jealous and possessive and controlling of Kim Porter even after they would be off and not on, allegedly. And ever since, uh, Diddy has raised Quincy, I'll be sure, and Kim Porter's son as his own. So, oh, 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 thank you, Oz Fly Girl. I appreciate that. So more to come with all this craziness but um i hope you all have a wonderful rest of your sunday i am coming back later today i know that's crazy but i have to recap the second episode of the valley on bravo so if you're into that television show or just into me roasting and recapping come back around 6 p.m so in about an hour and a half i might move it a half hour out now that i went this long just so i can rest my voice walk the dogs and do the things but uh, don't forget to smash that like on your way out please 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 leave a comment after the video post i love hearing from you guys interacting being able to see what you think about uh, the topics that we talk about because I don't get to get to all of your comments in the comment section. And I apologize for that. Shout out to all my super chatters today. DM, Evelyn, Colleen, thank you for becoming a member on YouTube. David Cushmore, thank you for the super chat. Artist, super chat. Pamela, thank you for the super chat. Chicken Head, multiple times. Um, sincerely, Shelly, thank you for the super sticker. And Nicole Larson, thank you so much for the super sticker I just saw. And thank you to those of you who hit me up on the Venmo Cash app paypal appreciate you guys also follow me on social media if you don't already i'm almost at six thousand followers on my instagram at jolene lunzer i also have another instagram that i'm kind of close to ten thousand. um it'd be cool to hit that uh no offense all offense on instagram and jolene lunzer on instagram and also jolene lunzer on the ticky tacky all right you guys are so appreciated your beautiful little pumpkin spice babies and I'll see you later on this evening. And always remember to enjoy yourself because it's later than you think. Bye. If you like what you